camera over there? What's going on with that? Peter! Peter! What? Well, good day, D-Live, and welcome back to the Gives A Minutes D-Live stream. That's too overexposed. Let me just make that even more overexposed. That's better. Welcome back to the Gives A Minutes D-Live stream for a Saturday... Is it Saturday? It's Saturday, yeah. Saturday afternoon... It's Saturday afternoon. It's the last Saturday afternoon I'll have in New Zealand. And so I thought, let's do a live stream up here at Queenstown Hill, drink a few beers and a couple of Cody's and say ta-ta to this wonderful country. So thank you for joining me if you're, if you're here. I'm gonna just bring up the stream to verify that this is working. Let me just bring up the DLive machine ski um, because it has been instances in the past where it hasn't been working. So I just wanna verify that it is all good also, I'm half an hour earlier than I thought. I, um, I thought I might have had to walk around a, bit, a little more to get a good spot here because it is quite windy. You probably can't tell from here. I've got a lovely wind sock on, but it is quite windy up here. Hold on. Oh, okay, everything's good. Uh, Donovan with the follow. Donovan123. Yo, Donovan. Thanks for following the Gives A Minute D Live stream. Now, this makes you the latest giver right here on the channel. By the way, it's too hot here. Now, why would this make you a giver? Well, let me explain. You see, you're giving me your time to consume the content. Me, I'm a giver because I'm giving you my time to create the content. And so you see how we're both givers here, and this is a two-way rock. And you're the latest giver on the Gives A Minute D Live stream. Thanks for the follow. I'm gonna need this later because it's gonna get cold. There's still snow on the ground up here. That's why I thought I would have put this on straight away, but in the sun here, it's quite warm. Yeah, I'm gonna show you around a little littles here. We got the Remarkables right here. Let me just make sure that that's exposed correctly so you can see that. Well, yeah, that's all right. Remarkables. Uh, so Queenstown Hill does extend even higher up here. I'll just drop the exposure down a little bit there. Yeah, it does extend a little higher up. That's the summit of the hill, but up there it's super windy and ice cold wind. So I actually went up there and then came straight back. Um, and I'm a little in the, sh I guess it's a little sheltered down here. Like 
we got for those of you who've been up the Queenstown Hill before this is the time walk right there is the um, that dish that you can sit in that spiral dish um, Lake Wakatipu Cecil Peak Walter Peak on the other side Sunsets in the west, which I kind of got wrong. I thought the west was more this way. The west is more that way So we may be seeing a nice sunset here, but either way we're gonna stay here till dark I do have the uh, facilities to get back down the hill um, In the dark I've got a headlamp and whatnot and I'm all I'm all protected from the weather and I got a beer and four Cody's so that's the plan Basically seeing out New Zealand. This is the last time I'll stream in New Zealand. Is that level? I don't know if that's level. Need the H-man in the chat. Yeah, the last time I'll stream from New Zealand, so I wanted to come up here. This is a pretty easy walk to, to do. Where's my water? I did bring a water as well. That's oh, in here. Yeah, if you're um if you're in Queenstown, this is a pretty straightforward walk to do. Um, probably takes I guess if you go slow, it'd take you about 40 minutes to get from the bottom to the top. Um, some steep sections, some really nice forest, and then it pops out into like, you know, top of the hill open style, but it's really pretty. And um, yeah, just two days ago, it was covered in snow. So I thought it'd be wet up here. It's actually quite dry, but there is still patches of snow on the, on the um, tussocks just here. <sighs> Delicious. New Zealand tap water is pretty good too, I've got to tell you. I'm going to give you more of an angle that way, I suppose. So, let me just say uh, to the chisel chats, still a little overexposed. I've got to get my exposures correct. I've got to use my histogram instead of just looking at the screen, dude. Um, while we're here, Okay, so I see Rich and I see Shala in the chat. Shala Rose and Richard Santic. How you doing, guys? Good to see you. Um, check H level. Check H man. Yeah, I, I believe. No, that's all good. That's all good. We are good. Nice to see you, Shala. You did ask me about when's the next when's the next stream happening. It's happening right now, and it is the last stream as well. And Rich, how you doing, man? In Vancouver, Canada. I might plug in my um. For the first time ever, I brought up a uh, an individual charge for my phone instead of having to rely on the other the other um, power banks I've got. So this should keep my phone charged fully. I'm still not happy with my exposure though. This, I guess it's the sun, dude. That's the sun. How can you expose both? You can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. So. I don't really need to do this because I'm finishing up here in New Zealand, but I should activate a free hour of data on my two degrees service just because. It looks Hendrix here. It looks good to you. Thank you, man. How you all doing, everybody? Final last time for New Zealand. Can we get a new? Can we get a Zealand? And by the way, I'll do this as a few times throughout the stream, but if you're watching this and you're not on dlive.tv, if you're watching this, maybe you're watching on my Facebook, maybe you're watching on my Twitch channel, maybe my Trovo, maybe my YouTube channel, maybe on my Twitter, maybe you're watching on LinkedIn. Wherever it is you're watching, if you're not on dlive.tv, I can't see your chat comments. I'm only looking at the one chat, it's the DLive chat. So come around to, or come down to dlive.tv and once you're there, put a slash in and put gives them in it or just search around, you'll find me on, on, the, um, on the website. And then we can chat, because if you are, if you do want to have a conversation, it's happening over there on DLive. Can we get a nude Zealand? Oh shit, I bet there's a website like that, hey. I'll listen to some split ends later. Split ends, okay, okay. I mean, we could do a music, well, we can't really do a music stream now. Is it too early to drink a beer? Because I do have one beer and four Cody's. Is it too, I mean, sunset's not till eight. It's 3.30. You know what, I should hold out a bit. I should hold out. That, four, I'll crack a beer. I'll crack a beer in half an hour. Pretend this is a beer. I don't want it to get, oh no, I won't get warm. <laughs> I don't want it to get warm, it's in New Zealand. Um, so, let me just refresh my trousers here on DLive. My stream seems to be stuck, but I know it's not. I'll just refresh those trousers. So, 
Do we want to wrap up? Like, do we want to talk about like New Zealand and my thoughts and like the time that I've spent here? It's just, it's just shy of six months that I've been here. Um, it's never too early, blasphemy. No, but what I meant was, will I run out before sunset was mainly my concern. It wasn't, my, my concern wasn't, is it too early in the day to have a drink? My concern was if I start having a drink now, will I finish them before sunset? I want to have them while the sun's setting is what I'm getting at. Never too early, blasphemy. Um, Cause yeah, I had to carry everything up and that's part of the, you know, like bringing all the streaming gear and carrying a bag with like my jacket, I've got my snowboard pants, I got, I got, Snowboard pants, jeans, and thermals. I got uh, th thermal, uh, long sleeve thermal. I got a t shirt and a hoodie, and I got a jacket as well. And I had to carry all that and my streaming gear. So, when are you flying out? On Thursday, Hendrik. Thursday. Well, well let's just let's hope it's Thursday. It's, it's scheduled for Thursday, but it is with Jetstar, so anything could happen. Luckily, there's no like nothing dire at the other end of my trip. Like, there's no appointments I got to keep, or there's no you have to uh, be here for this or that. It's just just arrive. But Jetstar is quite famous for uh, swapping out flights. Let's just say and cancelling them all together a lot of the times. Uh, should have streamed from the pub. From the pubbery, probably diverted. Stream from the pub. What pub? When was I going to go to the pub? Should have streamed from the pubbery, probably diverted. I'm not too sure what to make of that comment. The pubbery. Was I going to do a stream from the pub? Hmm. Jason, good day, gives and givers. Hello, Jason. What lovely manners you have. Good to see you. Cheers. A little water action here. Uh, oh, problem solved. Problem going for a <whistles> cigarette. Problem, probably problem. So stream from the pub, but then you wouldn't be up here. There's no. Would you rather go to the pub and do a stream, or be on top of Queenstown Hill? I think I'd rather be up here, hey, like than sitting in a pub. You won't run out of beer. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. So if you stream from the pub, there's an endless amount of beer, but all right, fair, fair, fair. But yeah, you then then you forego the scenery. Um, yeah, so you gotta decide whether you want scenery or you wanna be in a pub. I'm hearing you, I'm hearing the pub for you, Shyla. But yeah, definitely won't run out of beer. But I have brought a Spates beer up, and the reason I brought a Spates beer, it's not very nice beer, but it is the beer that I drank in the year 2000 when I'm pretty certain I got I I'm gonna check this when I'm back in Australia but I'm almost certain that this spot where my camera is sitting right now is the spot where Shelly sat and lost a plot in that Charlotte I know you've seen it I know Hendrik you've seen it if no one else has seen my short film about a relationship bust up that happened in this town in the year 2000. Well, one of the um, one of the main one of the big scenes happened. I'm almost positive it's right here because I'm standing there filming. Shelly's sitting on this rock with her. She's facing. She's facing the Remarkables. Like you can see the Remarkables in the background. She's sitting right here, and she's saying. And yes, this is a bloody marvelous, wonderful place, but what's the point of being here if I can't earn enough money? And she was complaining about... I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen the film, but she was complaining about getting... She was complaining about not using her degree as a childhood... as a English... as a... Dude, what was her degree? 20 years and I can't... She studied textiles. She was complaining about not being able to use her university degree and having to get a job in town. She actually got a job at Fresh Choice before she got a job for NZ Ski, which is kind of interesting. Um, and she was complaining about the amount of money she's going to be earning. Basically, the, the crux of the argument was 
she had no money left because she spent it all in Sydney. <laughs> Came from Perth, flew into Sydney, see my family for two weeks, then on the way to New Zealand. And in, in Sydney, Shelley spent all of her savings on dresses and stuff that you, she didn't need. And when we got to New Zealand, she had no money. So I bought everything, bought a van, paid the deposit on a rental. We, I did it all. And then she got, had to get a job and didn't like it. And uh, this is where the argument, I'm pretty certain, like uh, there's no other explanation for the location because there's two little, like there's two areas that it could be, but the one down there doesn't have the remarkables in this kind of vista behind it. Yeah. She complained about oxygen. She complained a lot, didn't she? She, she definitely complained, but let's not, let's not go too deep, but I am, um, I am just, I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna go back and look at my footage from, from old, like 2000. When I get back to Australia, I'll pull it up and I'll just compare. I shot a little video here today, just kind of explaining it as well. A pub overlooking Queenstown Hill would work well. <laughs> that way you get the pub as well, yeah. Anyway, what I was saying about the year 2000, so I came up here, I didn't know this was a walk. Like this is a very easy exit, well, it's very steep, but it's a very easily accessed walk from town. But when I first arrived here, living on Huff Street, which is the same street I live on right now, I could look out my window and see this mountain. And I was like, that's it. I'm going to go across the street. Turns out that was Gorge Road, cross Gorge Road, and I'm going to hike up that hill. I've also found out since being here that that was wrong to do because it's actually private land. Um, there was no fence line or anything. There was no... There was no TSS Ernst Law. There was no, um, I didn't cross any gates or anything. I just went across the street. I'm almost certain I went through the uh, yard for NZ Ski or the JCL Asphalt. I'm pretty certain that's where I entered it. And I just walked up the hill, just scaled the hill. And I took a six pack of spates. And the only reason I got spates was because I thought it was silly because it sort of reminded me of mate. And that's an Australian word for companion. So I was like, get a spates, mate. So that's why I bought spates. And that's why I have spates with me today. Only one though, um, just as a little throwback to the year 2000. So all this talk about that beer and I think I'm, how close are we to four? Um, I love the Manly Circa 95 video last night. Charlotte, thank you. I got a lot of those kind of videos coming. In fact, next week, there's the same style of video, but it's in Katoomba and um, yeah, very funny, very funny. I'd forgot all about all that old school footage, but there's some very funny stuff coming. Um, Andrew Furl, how are you doing, man? Good to see you, buddy. My last stream from New Zealand and look, the crew's in town. Good to see you, Andrew. Um, yeah, speaking of 1995 and 96, Andrew Furl is, there's probably some videos coming of you, dude. Oh, there was, there was one. By the way, everybody in the chat, say good day to Andrew Furl. He's the gentleman on the From the Vault Friday video about four weeks ago that was getting off his tits drunk at 10.30 a.m. on a fishing charter. So, not throwing you under the bus, Andrew, but that was a fun time. I don't know, if, I don't even know if you've ever seen that footage, dude. Can someone link that in the chat? Because, I don't know, Andrew, did you ever see it? I, I did post it to you on the timeline thing. But yeah, that was funny, man. That was funny. 10.30 a.m. I think you... Did you... Did you start drinking the night before and you were still going the next day? Or did you just get up... I, I can't imagine you got up early and started drinking. It must have been continued from the night before. The roll down the hill, the lost wallet, the talk through the window. Dude, there, there is a, a lot of that, a lot of crazy stuff coming up. Or well, not crazy, but a lot of silly stuff coming up, Shyla. See, I filmed everything back then, much, much to the, what's that? Chagrin, I love that word, the chagrin. Much to the chagrin of my, um, my, my mates. They didn't like the video camera back in the day. Kind of sometimes, some people got a little bit, oh, put that away, man, or what are you doing? It's just funny to think of, like, now everybody has a camera all the time, every time, and, like, everybody films. I don't know if I like it or not like that, because it was a bit more... Although everything gets documented, so... 
See, now thinking about it, like, I wish there were there was documents of this, 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 and that. I can think of, like, a whole handful of things that didn't get documented that if it had it happened today, if it wasn't me documenting it, 20 other people would do document it with their phones, so. You have seen it, but I remember it. Oh, you haven't seen it, but I can, oh, I can't wait to see it. Um, someone, Shiloh, if you're, if you're handy on, on a, if you're handy on a browser, can you just go and, and, and have a look for that? It's on the From the Vault Friday playlist. You are ahead of your time. I just, you know, I, I gotta thank skateboarding for that. It was all because of skateboarding that I filmed everything because skateboarding and videoing went hand in hand. That's how you could like slow things down and look at like, did that Ollie actually get off the ground or, you know? I remember watching footage of my foster brother, Bill, learning how to Ollie and he ollied, he tapped the tail so hard and he was so, like you tap the tail hard into the ground and then you slide your foot up and then you level it out. And he did it so hard that his back foot would come off the board. He did like a, a one footed, but it was the back foot that, and we slowed it down on the, on the old Canon shoulder mount camcorder and we could like go frame by frame and look at how, dude, your foot came so, the foot came off that far off the board. You don't do that on an ollie, you should keep the back foot on. So that's where that came from and just like trying to preserve and document skateboarding and then it was like, well, you can document everything. Um, who knew that every, almost 30 years later, everyone snaps pics and videos daily. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it is strange. It's very good though, because like, yeah, like I just said, everything gets documented. So like 200 years from now, they won't be like, oh, how come, who was married to that person and where did they live? No, they'll be like YouTube channels about it. I'm gonna put this over this way a bit more. That's not level. Oh wait, no, that's too close to the sun. You wanna see more of the, you know what? I should be over, until the sun sets. Let me just change angels and give you this vista, right? You don't want, you wanna see more of the, um, the lake Whakatipu, I guess. That's a better angel, isn't it? That's better like that, yeah. I'm, so, I'm certain that is. Uh, which one am I looking for on From the Vault Fridays? Um, the thumbnail says drunk. Or oh, no, the thumbnail says 10.30. The thumbnail says 10.30. And it's uh, drunk drunk sea fishing, or fishing, fishing drunk or something. I watched the Val Kilmer documentary and like you, he took a whole a video camera everywhere Many otherwise lost moments he captured on film. Oh wow, dude, what's that? Dude, I'm gonna get a screenshot of that. I'd love to see that. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out. Um, thank you, Rich. I'm gonna check that out for sure. So, back to the, uh, to the uh, location at hand. What a fantastic country this is, like, so much just and by the way this isn't a very nice day you probably can't tell but it's it's actually quite windy there's a there's a wind coming from the west it's like well that's the south so it's that's west yeah the wind's coming from southwest and it's it's actually not that pleasant here but it looks good but yeah this country just just dribbles with beauty and um, it's got a, a hell of a lot more snow right now because three days ago it started puking down again it snapped cold and the snow fell and I was like oh hello I guess uh, winter's back second month of spring and winter just went no 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 you're not done yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not through with you yet, hey. And it, and it, they said 50 centimeters of snow up the remarks, but there was definitely more than that when in, in I guess, windblown pockets. There it is, Shyla, thank you so much. That's for Andrew Furl in the chat or anybody else that wants to see it. That's the uh, deep sea fishing, uh, was it my birthday or what? what did, Andrew, why did we go deep sea fishing again? I don't even know where that, why, I know what it was. We. My work went on it. That's right, we went with the same charter company that my work went on. 
and for some reason it was good fun and I figured it'd be good fun again so that's it wasn't a birthday yeah good times yeah yeah and so I've managed to uh, like either live stream or shoot a video of a whole bunch of this place and to be completely frank I've only scraped like the tiniest bit of it right there's so much more here to see and so much more here to, to do it's a it's a well it's not a shame but it's just a matter of fact like there's too much to do here there's too too much to see yeah Charlotte spring here so she's in the um, southern part of Victoria Australia uh, spring here definitely has not sprung either. It's been cold and rainy still. Yeah, right. Interesting. What about Brisbane, uh, Hendrik? What about where you are? Bris Vegas. Interesting. This weather, aside from that wind, this weather f reminds me of when I first arrived here in May. And it, and it was like... It was teasing on winter so there is still like right now there's a chill in the air like when the wind blows there's a chill to the air um and that's what it was like in may but you knew winter was coming whereas now it's like how can there still be the chill i feel i feel it feels like it's blowing off the snow on the hills and that's why it's cold the the wind is cold because it's coming across the cold mountains uh, Charlotte, I'll get the Bibby tea off to you soon. Was hoping to see him at that festival, but not worth the dollars. When he's the only act I've ever heard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Was that... Was that the Port Campbell Festival? Now, what time is it? Is it beer o'clock? Eight minutes till beer o'clock. Four, I reckon 4 p.m. is a good time to crack the beer in terms of longevity. Hendrik, it's today's okay, but a lot of rain. Oh, you've had a lot of rain as well. I have seen the um, the uh, bomb radars for the for the east coast, and there has been a lot of rainfall. A lot of flooding going on, right? A lot of uh, low land, low lying land floods happening. Um, what about your feet, Hendrik? How's how's the update for the for your feet, man? Still giving you a tr hard time. Yeah, Port Campbell next month. Yeah, okay, Port Campbell. Port Campbell and Port Ferry is not far from there too, yeah? And it's just Peter Bibby, the only act you knew on that bill. Yeah. Dudes, when I get back to Australia, it's virtually the end of the year, isn't it? Like, October. October is like, pff, might as well be November, then it's December, then it's Christmas. That's come around so quick. The Denny Ute Muster was awesome. You need a Peter Bibby there, hey. Great weather, got sunburnt, got drunk, had a blast. I saw you with the dubs. Do you know you can get double uh, dries now? I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember, don't remember seeing them. Double, no, 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 that's not true. I have seen them, but they have, they're in the new form. They're in the new style can. Double jack and dry. Wow, there's a woman here that just turned up. She was in front of me at the beginning of the walk up the hill. She just arrived at the top. She's really taking her time. Uh, feet are fucked. Seem to be getting worse day by day. Dude, that sucks to hear, man. What? <sighs> so your mobility is now compromised, Hendrik. That sucks, man. What is the plan back in Australia? Surfing, s beach, warmth, sand, in that order. Homebrews, Jack Daniels. Multiplied, in that order. Ooh. Dude. Is that snowing over there? Could you see that on the stream? What the hell is that? 
Uh, that could be... No, that's not snow, that's... that's smoke. Can you see this? Can you see that coming around from, from the west? Southwest? South, west, southwest. That's smoke, hey. I'm hoping that's smoke, not snow, because if that's snow, it's coming our way. How can it be snow? There's no clouds above. What's it blowing off the land or something? No, that's smoke, man. I can't smell any smoke, though. It can't be snow. What's the temperature? What's the temperature? It's like nine degrees or something. Temperature is 14. It can't be snow. What the hell is that, then? It's coming from, like, Sunshine Bay. Which is around that bend. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. I guess we'll keep an eye on that. If anybody sees anything, oh, I don't know, or whatever. Can't even walk to the bottle though. Then, it, then you've got issues, Hendrik, big issues. May have to lay off the Shirazos and go on the H2O for a bit. Have you booked a haircut with Claudia? I haven't booked one in yet, but um, that's definitely gonna happen. Do you know what she? Do you know what happened? She got accepted into her uh, into uni uh, for medical medicine medicinal. What is it? Oh, I didn't even know what it was when she said, and I st I can't remember what it was, but it's something really rad. She got accepted before she gets the results of her exams. So she's already basically got her uni, her university. For those that don't know what uni stands for. It's the first three letters of the word, you fools. She got accepted into uni before she's even got the results of her final exams and she can defer it, which she's gonna do. She's gonna study dance for a year and then go back to do this uni stuff. Man, it's amazing. I'm on night shift in a coal mine. I wish I was there on the beers. Dude, night shift in a coal mine. Wow, that would be heavy work, man. This is the fog. It's like that Stephen King novel, The Mist. Claudia Barbershop better be live streamed. Okay, it will. That's the saddest advice I've ever given Hendrik from Shiloh. We're long overdue for a fam bam and poopsie stream. I bet she's grown like a weed. Yes, we are long overdue. Oh, what's this? Hey, there's a beer in this bag. What? How'd that get in there? Who put that there? Get that over here. Go on, have a spates, mate. Can you see it? Spates. For six but for six ninety nine a seven for seven ninety nine a six pack, I don't care where it's come from. That was what I said in the year two thousand. And I had cans back then. Yeah, that's that's definitely smoke of some sort. You know what they say though? There's smoke, there could be a flame. Oh, here's a question and answer. Uh, oh, shit. Okay, for you sports fanatics, how many separate pieces of wood, how many separate pieces of wood are in play at any given time in a cricket match? What? How many separate pieces, so not joined together, how many separate pieces, so individuals, how many, how many individual pieces of wood are there in a game of cricket? Like you got the bat, you got the stump, which is made up of three pieces, that's four. You got the bales, I know what they are, they sit on top of the stumps. There's two of them, so that's five, six, so six. Yeah? Are we gonna go with six? Sheet, a planted beer. Best to hide the evidence. The beer opened exactly at 4 p.m. on the second. Was it really, Hendrik? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm usually good with times and numbers and shit, but I didn't, didn't mean that. So I'm going with six. Now I can flip it around and find the answer. 
Dude, it says 12. The answer says 12. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's both ends. <laughs> you've got two batsmen and you've got two wickets. Therefore, you've got two times six. He freaking planned that shiz or he is so in tune with the clock it happened naturally. I genuinely didn't, I was reading this at the time, unless that's a clock, which it is not. By the way, if that smoke gets real thick, that could be a real nice sunset. When you said wood, my mind went full blown Beavis and Butthead. As in like, like something sexual, got wood. <laughs> Can't take you anywhere, Shyla. You'd fit right into that pub, wouldn't you, right now? You guys can see that though, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, it's coming in, whatever it is. That's kind of strange because That means the wind's going that way. Which is perfect because it's going over my head. Yep. You went there, Shyla. She went there. She goes there. She goes there. So Andrew, you work in a coal mine. Are you working now? Are you on on the clock now, or are you? Because I know like miners do like like two week two weeks on whatever whatever it is like ten days on three days off kind of thing. Who was I talking to the other day about working extra hours? Someone in my stream was watching the stream while they were working. Hmm. That was from Jack's Point stream. I got Danny Black on the dance floor at the Dora nightclub last cruise. Is he a good dancer? I don't ever think, I don't think I ever saw Danny dance. Danny dance. Beer isn't very good. Yeah, the other day, uh, when this fresh lot of snow fell, all of that was covered. It's it's it snowed down to um, sea level, which is not accurate. That doesn't make sense. It didn't snow to sea level. It snowed to lake level. This town, and therefore this lake, is 360 meters? 330. I think it's 330 meters above sea level. So it snowed to lake level, which means this was all covered. In 15 feet of pure white snow. Um, then I overslept the next morning, disembarked day, and they threw me out. <laughs> Heck, if I know me and Hendrik were both snozzled. Not to worry, you don't buy beer, you rent it. You rent beer? How does this work? We were rooted, so much fun. Now, Hendrik, you understand that means a different thing in Australia. As an Australian, you definitely understand what that means. What are you suggesting, H-Man? Am I gonna drink this water? I probably should finish this water off too. Jesus. Oh, 
I haven't been saying anything, but I've been noticing that all the aircraft that I've been seeing leaving, none of them are Jetstar. I'm flying with Jetstar. Are they not flying at the moment or something? Do I have to check on their website when I get home and we'll find out that I'm not going to be flying out? Uh, funny part was me and H-Man were like all jazz band watching one minute, next minute we were four bottles pros 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 Prosecco, Prosecco, and a few Jack and Coke. Yes, you drink the beer and soon after you return it. But you don't return it. They don't give you money to return it. You give it to them willingly. Random drinkses. Rooted can mean fucked or totally fucking out of it. Rooted. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's also another thing that happened. What well, recently someone told me... Someone tweeted... Oh, it's just a... One of the crypto streamers... Uh, one of the crypto Twitter handles I follow made a comment about... What was the word? Get a dog up here. Anybody heard this? Uh, anyone outside of Australia heard the saying, get a dog up your mate? Get a dog up here. He was saying that they say, get a dog up here. And they're in Perth, by the way. Get a dog up here. They say that when they're saying hello to someone. So it's like, oh, this is my mate, Peter. Oh, good day, Peter. Get a dog up here. We don't do it that way. We would say, that would be a farewell thing, like, oh, hey, Peter, it's been good hanging out with you, man. I'll catch you later. Get a dog up you, and then leave. I'm going to just get a dog up me here and put this over here, actually. Has anybody... I mean, am I right or am I right? I feel like I'm right. Although, can you use get a dog up you in a, at, a, at a welcome as well, at a hello? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. By the way, I'm surrounded by this wonderful New Zealand slate. Go to a Beaumont tire, uh, Tiles warehouse, you'd pay a lot for this shit, hey? You know why? It's because it weighs a lot. Like, if I wanted to bring this home to make a fireplace, I'd only be able to bring two or three of them, because that'd be my 25 kilos of checked-in luggage. But right now, it's a perfect beer um, stool just sitting there. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see that, but that's sitting, I'm just putting my beer on it like that, on the ground, sitting there perfectly. Beauty. Beauty, mate. I just put a little jack in the chat. There you go. Didn't actually mean to do that. How did I... Well, while we're here, how about those as well? Can I get out? Oh, there you go. Rob back's in the house. G'day, Rob. How you doing, man? Good to see you, buddy. How are you, Rob? Good to have you. Good to know you. Just watching a little uh, smoke action come across the Whakatipu. Can you tell I missed my youth? You missed your youth. Do you miss it or you skipped it? Is that what you're saying? You skipped your youth, Sharla? Making up for it now. Poor H-Man had actually got up and out of the room in time. You're drinking till 4 a.m. Dude, my housemates are trying to get me to go out till all hours. Sunday night, they're like, man, we've got to go out and party, yeah, it's your last, it's your last night, or your last week in town. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm down for some drinks with you guys, you know, like all of us will be together. I'm down for it. But I don't want to go out until sunrise, because then my entire next day is rooted. H-man. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'd, I'd rather just drink at home and then go out for a couple and come home by one or two. But last time we went out, I was like, oh, I don't want to... 
I said the same thing I'm saying now, and we came back at like 4.30 in the morning. And then I was completely, just all the next day I was a mess. I'm a very sensitive man these days. I'm an older, I'm an older refined gentleman. I'd rather sip a little whiskey at home and fall around drunk down the stairs instead of going to a club. Club? Who wants to go to a club? I don't want to go to a club. We're not going to a club, we're going to a pub. Doing fine, how about you, Gifter? I'm doing well, even though this is the last time I'll be up here, the last time I'll see this, this is the last stream for New Zealand, so the last time I'll be doing this, yeah, it's a little, I'm on a little bit of the, the sad side here. We had a heck of a year, Hendrik, BB Cruz. You, yeah, you guys had a good 2022. The year of 2022 was the Shyler and Hendrik year. We got to see some real shit. You come up to Sydney a bunch of times. Poor old Gives. Yeah, like, it's all good. It's like skateboarding, man. I don't skateboard anymore because when you take a tumble, you don't bounce back just like you used to when you were younger. Same theory. I don't go out till four or five in the morning because I don't bounce back the next day like I used to. Something's gotta give. It's mainly Schlok. Schlok, if you're watching, it's mainly you that's pushing for the for the. Or, oh no, but he's he's got a he's got a new job, so he's changing. He's he's changing as well, but definitely want to have a few drinks though. That's for certain. Yeah, that'll be tomorrow night. Yeah, then I got to return uh, work uniform and radio. Don't forget the radio. That's in my bathroom. Make sure I make sure I don't forget that. Um, then I've also got to pack up my streaming gear. Send that back to Teradek. These are the things I've got to do. I've got to do those two things. I've got to cancel my uh, Vodafone and my uh, two degreeses. Um, I've already changed my rental uh, payment thing with one of the housemates. Um, got to pack and work out what I'm going to take back to Sydney, Australia. Got a whole bunch of souvenirs for the family as well. I can't believe I went souvenir shopping. I actually went into a gift, like a gift shop and got all this. Actually, the, the stuff I got is pretty cool. What day are you flying out? Thursday. Thursday. Uh, once you hit 40, weird things occur to bones, muscles, etc. They hurt and are easily injured. You got to drink to dull the pain. I actually took a bit of a tumble. It's a bit tender. I, um, all this fresh snow that fell the last two or three days, I went up, um, well, I made a vlog of it. The day that it was, like, the day that it was on, so, it, it snowed all day, and then it snowed all night, or most of the night. Sorry. It snowed a little bit in, let's just call it, what was it, Wednesday? No, Tuesday. It snowed, no, it was Wednesday, fuck. Either way, it snowed a bit on and off in the day. And then it snowed all through the night. And then the next day, up on the mountain at the Remarkables, it was snowing and blizzard and windy. And that's when I made the vlog. I went up and snowboarded, but it was, visibility was up the crackers. You couldn't see anything. But it was still snowing. And they only had one chair lift open. Only Sugar Bowl was the, the one chair that was running. So Curvy Basin and um, Shadow Basin, both those chairs weren't operating. So that meant that the next day, when the mountain was open again, Curvy Basin and Shadow Basin had fresh, fresh powder, because no one was up there. And the next day was blue sky, and no wind, and that was yesterday. So everybody went up. It was absolutely chockers up there. Like, it was like the middle of winter again. The peak, the peak of the season was upon us again with, in terms of customer numbers and um it was full it was full on like i i got up there super early and i still didn't get fresh lines because they were already tracked out people were already up there getting getting it um but i tweaked my knee out i ch i came down a um it was a bit stupid actually I, I i chose a line that unless there's a lot of snow there's not going to be yeah, unless there's a lot of snow falling, it's not going to be usable. It's going to just be tussock and rock. And I and I went 
I went over to that spot without seeing it. I should have looked at it from the lift, but I didn't bother. I got too excited and I went down and I went, this is up, um, this is up Shadow Basin and on the front face of it. So basically, if, you've, if you know the area, you're looking at the hike up to the altar chutes on the other side, keep going down that ridge and go off the front face of that ridge. And you can still, you can still see the ski field in front. So you can look up it and see it. And I didn't, didn't visual it and I went up anyway. And, and I came down that section and it wasn't as good coverage as I thought and it was quite tussocky and I got caught on a tussock and it it's almost like catching an edge when you hit a tussock on the wrong angle because at one point you're on the back of your heel hitting powder and the next thing you know you've just dug in and it's throwing you off and it threw me off and it kind of twisted me around and my knee did tweak out a little it's I was gonna say it's muscular but it, it feels like it's I think I bruised it. I think I bruised a bone in there. It's not, it's not bad. Like, it's, I mean, obviously it's not bad. I can hike up and everything. That was a good vlog when you sunk in the snow. Hendrik, dude, that was insanity. That section, when that, where that happened, you look at that on a normal day and you'd be like, no way, no way, dude, that wasn't that spot. There's no way there was that amount of powder. That is the top of a run. It's open to Anybody who's anybody can go to that spot. Like, you basically ride past it. Like, everybody skis down that way. And I went there, and there was no one had been there, because you couldn't see. Like, it was, the visibility was so bad. People weren't going down there. They didn't, didn't you, yeah, people just didn't get there. And I was there, and I was like, I'll go, I'll go close to this, because I was thinking if I go close to the, um, the fence line, there'll be bl blown snow as well. And I went in there and I'm, I'm like, oh shit, too deep, too deep, too deep. And I'm not fast enough, right? Because I have got to get to this ridge to go down. And I'm slow down, slow down, and then I'm like, I'm stuck. And, I, and when I was stuck, like, easily up to my, um, to my pecker. That was cool, man. Uh, Charlotte fell down a freaking escalator day before surgery in Melbourne. Doctor asked if I was experiencing domestic violence. God bless the doctor. He made the right, he's like, oh, is there anything, any troubles at home there, Miss, Miss Rose? What about the little girl behind Benon on the snow bus the day we watched him on the ferry? The girl behind me on the snow bus. Oh, on the, um, the shuttle stream, that was cool. Had DV on the Brisbane cruise too. Security thought I was beating up Sharla. Cracked the rib laughing. What's DV? Domestic violence. You need to get on the men before the Christmas cruise, otherwise I'll hire Roy the Ruder scooter. Jesus. Did we clip it? Oh, speaking of clips, don't want to be the one to ask, but can someone clip this? You know? Why can't I hear footsteps? Oh. Somebody walking right there. Now I can smell smoke. That's smoke. It's not snow. Yeah, I can smell that. It's it's a... Uh, well, they don't call it bushwalking here, so they don't call it bushfires, do they? They call it tramp fire? If it's tramping? Is it a tramp fire? I'd name, I'd call that a bushfire in Australia. Although it might not be, we can't see it. It could be someone burning off. It's almost cold enough to put gloves on. Just saying. Actually, I should be sitting on the slate. Why am I? Let me put slate underneath here. I've got slate up there. Why don't I put slate all the way down here? Oh, that's still rock, that's why. Uh, well, I don't need to do that then. Okay. A barbecue in New Zealand, call it the silence of the lambs. Jesus. Ah, kids. Oh, dude, there's a lot of smoke coming out of there now. Look at it from the top. I guess that's kind of Moak Lake. That'd be the back of Moak Lake. Or the front of it. 
Hope they haven't burnt down Moak Lake. That's my favorite place in New Zealand. This is not comfortable. I'm getting my gloves out. I don't care if it looks wussy. My hand's cold. And I got gloves this year. I'm gonna wear them. And there's nothing you or anyone else can say to change my mind. Just another reminder, uh, anybody who's watching, if you're not watching this on dlive.tv, I'm not seeing your chats. So if you wanna chat with me, you gotta come over to dlive.tv slash gives a minute. Yep. Otherwise, I won't see what you're saying. You might be watching this on my Facebook. Hello. You might be watching this on my Twitter. Hello, Twitter. Or Trovo. Or Twitch. They all start with T. Anywhere, uh, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. And if you're chatting on YouTube, I'm not seeing it. I'm only looking at the one chat here. And it's on DLive. So come over to dlive.tv slash gives a minute. Bam. Um, probably where the smoke is from. From the Silence of the Lands barbecue. Clips are down. Of course, DLive is F3D. Um, okay, so that's a shame. So we can't be doing any clips then. Bugger. Bugger. Guess we just have to remember this then. Remember this day. I got a tickle in my nose. I got a sneeze here. Woohoo! Excuse me. Maybe I should put my jacket on? Is that that's a signal that's that's a sign that I'm cold, right? Hang on a second. Could just be the smoke getting in my nasal passage, something tickling my nasal passage. Oh, this is filthy! So much rabbit poo down here. I can just see them saying at the airport, Have you been through any native farmland in New Zealand? Yeah, I have actually. Step, step, step through this way. I'm gonna have rabbit poo in my shoe. Rabbit poo. So, if we're going to sit on this, I'm going to make certain that it's not on... That's poo. I want to put this down here. That's cosy. Nasal passage. Something tickling my nasal passage. Passage. Oh, dudes, I had the funniest sleep talk last night. What was I saying? I recorded it. Should we play it? Let me just play it. I don't know how well you'll hear this. I'll put it up to the um, I'll put it up to the microphone. Uh, favorites. Oh, okay. So I named this one "Take a Look Over Janet." Now the only Janet I know is well, I don't even really know so much anymore. Well, there's actually, no, there's two. There's Janet in my high school. Janet English from Spiderbait. But why would I be dreaming about her? Okay. 
I'm gonna pause that while old mate in the chopper makes all that noise above. But yeah, I'm singing a song, Take a Look Over Janet. And there's a big ass helicopter. I don't even know if you could hear that. It's as close to the mic as I can. Yeah. I oh, will play it again. But that's as loud as it goes. I'll play it again once old mate's gone. I mean, I gotta put that into a song, huh? That's, there's, I'm singing right there. Anyway, let's get back to the stream. I'll take a look over Janet later. We already, we've already assessed that I'm a weirdo. There's no denying that. Um, look over Janet later. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Chat's still stuck on nasal passage. Passage. Did you guys hear that? In the was the sleep talk audible? Aud was it audibly loud enough? And I took my gloves off. Awesome. My hands are cold. Just loud enough. Had to get close to the speaker. Okay, we'll do them. We'll do them again. I've I've done some pretty funny sleep talks since I've been here. We'll get we'll do a sleep talk stream when I'm back home. I'm looking forward to panel streams. Hey, like panel discussions. Panel panel streams where we get to have a good good long discussion about things. I enjoy doing panels. Yeah, Hendrik, you can you you can come on. Yeah. I was kind of thinking like you know when you're away and you like I don't know, like you think about other things and you think just being in a different environment gives you kind of like an not an urgency, but it sort of like inspires you to think of other things. And I was just thinking like how could I could we do so I feel like I'm just trying to think 
should we tap into um, other creators on other platforms? Like, I guess what I what I liked about CreatorCast was that we brought in people outside of the sphere, if you like. So we could go and do a panel discussion in a week or two when I'm when I'm back home. We could have Hendrik and oh, I've got to take this. Hold on a second. Hello? No, it's already sold. Oh, really? Well, I could call them back and see if they don't want it. How, really, you're gonna offer me that much? <sighs> yeah, I mean, okay, all right, I'll call, I'll call them, I'll see if I can get it back and then I'll resell it to you. This isn't working. Just trying to do a stupid gag. Um, Yeah, we could go outside of the sphere and like grab in new like I don't know like could you could you go to like YouTube and just put out a call and say hey are there any creators that want to come on for a chat? You know, it's a bigger pond. Who's 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 ready with a green screen or with their camera and whatever that wants to come on for a chat? But then again, do you really want to do that cuz it opens up all kinds of dicks. You know, like all kinds of fools that'll come on and just cause trouble. Maybe I've got to vet them first. Maybe I've got to put a call out and then like have a chat with them off camera or off stream and then then bring them on. I guess what I'm what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at or what I'm trying to get towards is can we do streams where we talk to other creators that aren't necessarily inside our ecosystem that aren't inside D Live or aren't inside like people that we don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, I want to, I want to broaden the, broaden the stroke, the reach. Maybe, maybe those streams. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should do them outside of D Live. Maybe they should be YouTube streams. I don't know. I'm just thinking aloud here, folks, just uh, pondering the thought process that goes along in my head. Why did I take my gloves off again? It's got a, that wind is cold. I'm gonna put this up. Am I gonna really go with that already? Shit, dude, it's spring. Am I gonna need this already to be put up? Nah, not yet, come on. Might be better on YouTube, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe we'll have to think about that, like... Just do some... Just reach out to some creators and just, but then it, then I don't want the conversation to be like, so how's YouTube? How do you, how do you get better YouTube? What, how do you do YouTube? How do you, how do you, re, how do you crack the thumbnail or the algorithm? I don't, I don't know. Like that was creator cast. Like, I guess what I'm getting at is like, it'd be good to be like more of a podcast format, but yet open-ended questions but then again unless the creator is someone special who gives a rats what they think hmm it's got to be someone interesting that's going to want to have a so it's going to be someone that's interesting to listen to that's going to want to come onto my channel which could be hard to, to persuade because I'm nobody Conversation is what I'm getting at, I suppose. Hmm. That beer is finished. Where'd the cap go? I put that down here, didn't I? Oh, there it is. So, put this over here. Now, I've only got four Cody's. 
So I should hold off on the first one. First one should occur at 4.35, 5.36. See, we're not going to make to the sunset, dude. Man, that's gotten way gnarlier. Anyway, um, what time is it? Can I crack a Cody already? It's 4.37. I just pulled pull, pull down my uh, notifications and I got an Instagram notification. I don't even post on Instagram. The fuck? Who's... Get out of here, Instagram. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. I know why that comes up. Because I posted it on Facebook and it dual posts to Meta. Which is Instagram. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Someone says you need to eat more. Thanks for the snow report. Gary Westfall, it'll be summer before you know it, mate. Dude, that's funny, Gary Westfall, I met him on a plane when I left Queenstown when I was here with Jetboards. Seigel is, is Paul, right? I don't know who Seigel is. Anyway, yeah, there's, there's Insta- I just got distracted by Instagram. Okay. Okay. Dude, that is a Ganali uh, storm, uh, uh, fire. That's a lot of burning. I can't handle it. I'm gonna have a Cody. Grim, in honor of Grimsky, William Cody's very special Kentucky bourbon. I've got to tell you though, not that great. Not that great. But the last chance I'll get to have these. So I might as well enjoy them, huh? Cheers. Is... we're gonna hear some sirens like aren't they gonna put that fire out cheers H man cheers dude what do you got there what do you got a little Shirazki little uh, Chateau de Cadboard Chateau de Cadboard love it I actually met some girls the other day on the bus suburban bus or bus coming back from coming back from the Jack's Point stream actually and um, they were oh that's right that's yeah they were they were drinking on the bus and then I I asked them what's the bus driver like you know is that you know, it's usually frowned upon right like you can't be boozing on a bus especially not a suburban bus and they and that she said Something like, um, oh yeah, it's not, it's not allowed, but they don't really stop you either way. Like we just walked on with it and he didn't say anything. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I said, I'd probably be the same if I was a suburban bus driver. And then they said, what, so what do you do? What, what's been your job? And I said, oh, I'm a shuttle driver for a Coronet Peak up at, on the mountain. And they were like, well, you, are you the guy with the red, they looked at, they're like, you're the red beanie guy. And I'm like, yeah. I'm, and they're like, you're the cool guy. You were the cool driver. I was like, oh, you didn't, so I drove you? And she said, yeah, yeah, he drove us a few times. 
and, that, and she said, oh, you, you definitely would have let us drink. On, and I was like, well, I don't remember. I mean, the only times that there was boozing on my bus was like the night ski nights, uh, the Hilltop Hoods and Catch a Fire. Those two nights were big, big booze nights. And like, there's no way of stopping people getting on with booze. So I just didn't really just turn a blind eye to it. Like, whatever, that's going to happen. So then the other times are, oh, dudes. <laughs> I only did one, but we sometimes we do wedding charters, and um, yeah, there was one the other week where I picked up with Jono and Red to drive, you know, Jono, and uh, these people were so drunk. It was a it was a wedding, and we were driving them back from the reception or the wedding from the chapel, if you like, into town to to party on. Um, and in my bus, I had the happy couple. And they were arguing. They were fighting on their wedding day. And I caught snippets of it from just listening while I was driving. So they got on the bus and everyone was laughing and yelling and carrying on. And they were, it was all good vibes. Good vibes in the gym. And as we got to probably just before Queenstown along Frankton Road, um, the, the wife said to the new husband, and, and the, she said, you haven't even thanked your sister for organizing everything today. And the sister was there in that same, like in the bus as well. And so when the sister, because they were so drunk, they were, it was like, like slurring the words, like you haven't even thanked your sister, all the hard work she did for you and put in for this day and you haven't thanked her. And then the sister caught onto it that, yeah, he hasn't thanked me. And then she got up, like got upset. It's like, oh, you haven't thanked me. Just like your wife says, you haven't thanked me. And then, these things always get exaggerated because of the booze, right? It just blew out into a massive argument. And then the, the husband, when we pulled up into, into town, the husband's like, I can't believe we're arguing on our fucking wedding day. And the, the wife got out and went, I can't believe it either, and stormed off and walked across the road, almost causing a car accident. And then they were arguing across the street in like, this is like 4.30 in the afternoon on their wedding day. And they, and they left shit on the bus. They left their, their bags. She left the sunglasses. I was like, hey, hey, uh, you got a lot of stuff here. Is anybody going to take that? I'll, I'll go and get it. Okay. Hey, guys, all your gear. You didn't bring it. And man, it's like, wow. So drunk. Oh, Hendrik, you're only on the H2O. Can't walk to the bottle hoe. Damn, dude. And Doug in the house, Dogski! How are you, man? Hey, give us and give us special give us Charlo and Hendrik. Yo, Dogski. Good to see you, man. Hope you're doing well. We're here at the last stream from New Zealand on top of Queenstown Hill. We're watching a bushfire or a tramp fire. I don't know what they call it in New Zealand, but it's really coming through. Probably should get a photo of that, actually. Even though we've been live streaming the whole thing, but... We've been here since the start, you know. Let me get a quick, quick happy snap. This should make um, Suki happy. You didn't do any photos in New Zealand? Yes, I did. Just kidding, Suki. If you're watching in the background, I took plenty of photos since I've been here. All iPhone photos. I'm gonna activate my free hour of uh, data on uh, two degrees. Last time I'll do this actually. Where is my uh, mobile? <whistles> mobile data. Here we go, it's up here for some reason. Okay. Data clock. Okay. Hold on. Start the clock. Free hour. We're doing clever things. A pack has started successfully. Why, well, thank you so much. <laughs> Gold Cody's, Doug. Yeah, these are the uh, exclusive ones. Uh, very special Kentucky bourbon, VSKB. They don't taste much different. Grimsky will argue that against me. Say, no, nah, they're the better ones, man. Well, they're not that good to start with, so I don't know how much better you can get. I guess anything's a step up. They, don't get me wrong. Like, I, sh I should be clear. Don't get me wrong. This is not a bad beverage. 
And and going back to when we were here the first time, and Grim, Grimsky did say that. He said, yeah, man, it's it's not great. It's just cheap. So I don't think he's ever come out and said, get this bourbon when you're in New Zealand. It's rad. I don't think he's ever said that. It's more like, this is the cheap one. Get it. So I did. Big storm, uh, not storm, uh, fire happening. Anybody want to do a bit of research for me, like back end research, see if they can come up with what's going on with that fire? I mean, I would say. Just from looking at the way, the where it's coming, it's, it's got to be coming from Moak Lake. It has to be. Yeah. I'll tell you, there's a fire up there at Moak Lake. Wasn't me. I, I, I didn't. I, I, I wasn't. Oh, that's a Jetstar plane. Okay, they are flying. Good. I'll see you in a few days, Jetstar. Dugsy, has the bus job finished or are there a few days left? No, it's all over, dude. It's all over. Uh, finished up on, um, so the last day was Sunday the 2nd of October. That was the last day driving. Then there was Monday off and then there was Tuesday, Wednesday on where I worked in the yard deep cleaning uh, the shuttles and another, uh, another, another bus, one of the other ones. Um, and I also did say that I would, I would work Monday, Tuesday, uh, I, no, not Monday. I did say I'd work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But what I didn't expect to happen was that it snowed again. So when the snow came and it came down quite heavily on the Tuesday and Wednesday, I was like, well, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this to go riding. I'm gonna go Thursday, Friday, snowboarding. So Friday was yesterday. So technically I could have worked Thursday and Friday, but I went snowboarding instead because of this extra snowfall. And Friday, yesterday was my last day snowboarding. Um, I mean, I might go again on Monday or ch Tuesday. I think Avi has Mondays off and he might, I, I, I'll only go if he wants to go, but I'm, otherwise I'm done with snowboarding. Um, been rad for what it was, but yeah, it's not, it's, yeah, there's no point going up. There's not, there's no fresh snow or anything, but. It'd be good just to go up with Avi, but I don't mind either way. Actually, no, I won't do that because I'm going to be handing my uniform back in and I'm also going to go and catch up with my old uh, boss, Dom and Sharon. Um, it looks like you really enjoyed that job. Thank you. Yes, I really did enjoy that job. And it's, it's, it's worth noting that you said that as a, as a viewer. Yes, I did enjoy that job. Yes, very much. Yeah. Really? Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that without me even prompting you to say that. Thank you for saying that with off your own bat, not me having any... I did enjoy the job. Really did. 
Uh, flew back on the Dreamliner from Perth. What a great plane. The Dreamliner. What's the Dreamliner? Yeah, boarding at the Remarkables. Yeah, yeah, the Remarkables. Because Coronet's closed. Yeah, true. But we're just watching this fire here, man. This is a fire that's burning. That's kind of... Uh, it's interesting right, interesting right now. I haven't heard any sirens either. Andrew Phil, did you get your Bitcoin? Yes, I did. I did. I did indeed. I dollar cost averaged in throughout the whole season and I managed to come away with a full Bitcoin and some and other, uh, hex, I've talked about Hex before, a bunch of other cryptocurrencies uh, related to Hex and some extra Hex as well. It was obvious that you loved that job, Hend Hendrik. You could tell from the shorts, Doug. Um, we will talk about that another time, but it is really, it's really notable that you should say that because, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on it another time, but it's, it's, yeah, it's just notable. I thought that was obvious too, that I really loved the job, but somebody else didn't think that. But anyway. It's a 777 wide body. Oh, it's a huge plane then. The Dreamliner. Maybe I'll get one of those back from here. Does Jetstar have a Dreamliner? No, they do not. Yeah. There's been... I don't want to get too deep into the cryptocurrency conversation, but because Andrew Fell asked, there's been a um, a lot of so hex is already done and dusted, right? It's 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 a mutable code. It's on the blockchain. It's already working. It's almost three years in now. Hex is done, but people are building cryptocurrencies around hex. So working off the theory of what hex does. And the, the most notable ones are the ones that are, so they're using, so there's a, there's a lot of game theory to the, to the HEX token. And one of the game theories is uh, bigger pays better and longer pays better. So these two, these two ideas of like, if you can stake bigger, you get a bigger bonus. And if you can stake longer, you get a bigger bonus, even bigger. And so these cryptocurrencies have, what they've done is they've pulled together multiple hex stakes and given you part ownership of a bigger hex stake. So if you're just a like a nobody like I am and you can't afford these big you can't afford to put millions of dollars into hex, now you can buy into it in the form of part of a big stake and you're part of that. It's really cool, like the, the, the theories behind it are like, wow, and they've got like one year, three year, seven year, and 10 year stakes. Really cool. Smart thinking to like work out, okay, this is how the code works. Okay, that works for an individual. What about if we grab 10 individuals or 100 individuals or 1,000 individuals and say, we wanna encapsulate all of them together and take the benefit and div divvy it up amongst multiple people. That's what they've done. And it's like, wow. Very cool. Jetstar have the 787 Dreamliner. Oh wow, maybe I will get a Dreamliner back home. Doug, would you consider it next year? It's great to see you so happy. Um, I, while I'm still here, I can see a dude taking a piss. <laughs> um, he doesn't think anybody can see him. I can see you pissing on that rock. <laughs> um, I seen me. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, up until a little while ago, the answer would have been an. You know what? I'm not going to do this now. We'll do it another time. But, good question. The seven eight seven Qantas, London, Perth, Melbourne. The route is London, Perth, Melbourne? Huh. 
Interesting. Wow. London, Perth, Melbourne. Yeah, right. Hmm. Definitely been an interesting last few weeks in, in the job, the last few weeks of that job. Very, very interesting. Hmm. And we'll, we'll definitely have a discussion about it. Be good to do it when I'm away from it, like when I'm fresh eyes from a distance, I guess. But yeah, really, I really did enjoy it. And it got... The time went so quick for me. It was... Yeah. I don't want to get... I'm, I'm dipping my toes into it, but I don't, I don't want to. Man, what is going on here? Every time I pick, pick my head up, I get like dirt flying into my eye or some shit. It's like, what is it? The wind picking up. Oh, it's probably, probably ash or something, right? Yeah, it's actually, dude, it's all over my lens, hey. I wonder what this was. I'm getting, there's shit landing in my eyes every time I look, kind of like, like look that way, which is towards the fire. And then if you, yeah, I don't think you'd be able to see it, but there is definitely, speckles of crap on my lens. I wondered what that was. Every time I looked over there, it was getting me in the eye. Right in my eye. Hope we don't get like spot fires and shit, like hot embers. How can there be a bushfire? It's like there's snow behind me. How can there be a bushfire? I mean, a tramp fire. How many beers you got left? None. None beers. I've only got four of these now. These are whisk. This is whiskey or bourbon. I got. F I got three more of these. Definitely gonna have to take it slow if I'm gonna make it to sunset. <laughs> Although sunset will be a little bit earlier now that we're covered in smoke. Yeah. No, I should have brought more, dude. But I had to carry it all up, it was heavy. I should have either brought more or started later. <laughs> Dude, that is cold up there though. I'm putting, I'm gonna put my hoodie on. I got hot ash landing in my eyes. That's, that's what that was, hot ash landing in my eye. That's frightening. Dugski, uh, my favorite was when you went to the bar in what looked like the industrial area. That's uh, Searchlight Brewery, yeah. That was cool, man. And surprisingly not, that stream did not get dinged. Or it got dinged, but it got all, all of it got released, I think. I think there, I think I'm clear on that stream. That was a favorite of mine too. Actually, yeah, let's do favorites. What was my actual favorite favorite stream? Oh, the shuttle stream, the, the, the day on the shuttle. That was my favorite stream for sure. But aside from that one, because that was like an, an anomaly, um, I really enjoyed, so, it's kind of sad to say it, but I really enjoyed the house streams, like the Jack by the Fire sitting at home streams when we're inside. Um, it's either that or the um, the jetty down here in Queenstown Gardens. That little that little jetty streams. Those ones I I I would go back to those quite often because they were easy to it was easy to get there. There was a great crowd in there. Yeah, yeah, and they were they were cool. And that's the other thing too. Like working for the mountain. As soon as you like people, they oh what do you do? Oh I work for NZ Ski. Well there's there's automatically like a um, there's a good vibe there, or, or, or a rapport already. 
well actually that, that can go both ways too um, yeah yeah this might be um, might keep Yeah, we might just leave that subject there, I guess. But yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I'm I'm back. I'm not doing a very good job of backing out of this conversation, but I'm going to back out of it anyway. I haven't, I'm sorry, but I haven't seen the gondola stream, but it's on the list. Oh, the, that was a good one too. Doug, I really enjoyed. Yeah, actually, I, okay, I enjoyed that room in the in the. Well, when you see it, you'll see. There's like this room as you get off the gondola that's got really beautiful lighting, and I really enjoyed sitting up there. We had a big fat black porter as well. What was that? Was that? What was that beer we had? Can't remember. But either way, um, the idea was to come up here for sunset, but you're not going to see that now. We can't even see um, Cecil Peak. We can't even see the Wakatipu. It's all gone. It's just a big, like, white mist. Hey, I gotta go and take a slash. Do me a favor. If Peter rocks up for, for my camera, just tell him to, you know, leave it alone. Shyla's back. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on Peter as well. Hey, Peter! Peter! There's a camera there! Peter, look at the camera! Why is there a camera there? Forget the camera! There's a fire! Huh? There's a fire! Oh, yeah! Forget the camera! Look at that fire! Shit! Can you feel the freaking ash landing in your eyes? I can, Peter! I can feel the ash landing in my eyes! That's right! Get out of there, Peter! There's ash landing everywhere here, folks. Ash is all over the place. I'm just looking at that angel. 
that'll do. I'm sure Peter will make one last appearance. I'm sure he'll come back a few times tonight. Dude, that is so freaking dense now. We need the sun to go down because that'll look really golden. You want to see what's going on Remarkable side? I'll show you. So here's the Remarks Remarkables. I'll zoom in a little. It's usually clearer than that, but there is a dark haze of smoke lining our eyes. Can't see, I mean, that's Cecil Peak. That, see, if the, if the sun was setting right now, that would look spectacular. My fear is the smoke will all blow away before sunset. In a selfish manner, I want to see... Dude, that ash landed right on my pants. In a selfish manner, I want to see the sunset happen right now. Because that will make it look... I mean, that's the west. That'll make it look rad. Some of the best sunsets, some of the best uh, visual displays have been when there's been bushfires. By the way, that's the peak up there, which we did go to. Um, but it was so windy up there. So that's why we didn't stay up there. But uh, yeah, Remarkables. We'll zoom back out here. And I'll put you Yahoo's back down on the angel over here. And we will uh, continue having a chit chat. That's too much of an angel. How's that? Are we level, H-Man? Oh, uh, yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, we are now. What's Peter's mate's name? Six months in and I only know Peter. Peter's the thief. He's the only one you need to know. Like, we don't need to know the other guy's name. I don't think he's got one. He's the nameless child. I mean, he hangs out with thieves, say, eh? Like, he doesn't need a name. There were some people walking along that path. Yeah, that, that's the trail up to the summit. Most people just go to the... Um, to the dish. Did, did Peter first make his appearance here in New Zealand or has Peter been around? I'm just gonna put you over there a bit more. Are we level? Yep. Has Peter been around before? I, I can't recall if Peter first turned up uh, in Australia. By the way, this would really suck if you were in Queenstown for, you know, one night only, one night only, and you came up Queenstown Hill because you'd seen my live stream on YouTube and you thought, I better do that walk, and you got up here and this is what you saw, because like, you can't see anything. Like this view, it's sh it's shocking at the moment. Like you'd be like, oh dude, we got ripped off. We're kind of getting ripped off here, not being able to see the Hwakatipu. But I'm enjoying it. It's different. We've been here before. If you want to see what this looks like, go and look at my other streams. More of an angel that way, man. Less of me, more of the scene. You know what I look like. Not that great. You want to see more of the lake. <laughs> or at least the smoke-covered lake. I thought that was snow originally. 
Dude, that is a massive piece of hash. Now this also could be uh, wilding burning. They burn off a lot of trees, the um, invasive species of trees. That could be what this is. I don't know. Dugsky, the first I heard of Peter was your first walk through Queenstown and you ended up near the lake for sure. Interesting, okay. Okay. So Peter is the, Peter's a Kiwi. I wonder if his mate's Kiwi as well. Maybe they're both Kiwis. Yeah, I think Peter I think Peter and his mates are Kiwis. I mean no one else would steal a camera. Shit. Dude, the view has changed so much. A controlled burn before the summer? They don't actually do that here, uh, Doug. They don't really do controlled burns like that, but they do do uh, burning off the invasive uh, plant species. I'm not too sure what they, what they are. I think it's the, the wilding pines. They do that. That could be that, but they would have done it I feel like it would have been done in winter, like it's spring right now. If, if that's a controlled burn, it feels like it's out of control. That, the amount of smoke this is... Mind you, the smoke is heading away from the population, so they might have picked it specifically to do it today so that... But still, it's, it's come back around into Queenstown. I don't know. Do you think Peter may be a pyromaniac? It could be Peter down there lighting off the fires. Who knows, hey? If anybody's watching this on my Facebook, anybody from Queenstown that knows what's going on, can you come over to dlive.tv, make an account and make a comment to let us know that what we're seeing here? Because I mean, if you're comment, so this is the thing. Maybe you're watching this on my Facebook and saying, dude, this is, and you're making all these great comments about what's going on. It's, it's, it's a controlled burn at Merck Lake or it's the October 8th, annual lamb fry up at Moak Lake or whatever it is maybe it's a rule maybe it's normal then let it, but we're not seeing that on Facebook I'm only looking at the one chat it's on dlive.tv so come on over to dlive and let me know what you what you know or let us all know what you know I'll, I'll be honest, it looks like it's kind of tapering off now, like it's not as big up there, it's kind of just all the shit that's accumulated, but there's not as much coming from up there. Charlotte, a large fire on farmland at Mount Crichton near Glenorchy. Mount Crichton, dude. Okay, so I was wrong. It's not. It's a bit further from Moak Lake. Okay, because I did the Mount Crichton loop track just recently. At one stage, flames up to 30 meters high forced the closure of the road between Queenstown and Glenorchy. Wow, so this is up-to-the-date reporting. Interesting. Thank you for finding that, Shyla. So Mount Crichton, go to my YouTube channel. You're on it right now if you're watching on YouTube. I did the Mount Crichton loop track. I probably walked through where this is happening right now. So it's an out of control fire or it has been brought under control by helicopters with monsoon buckets. Dude, okay. So it's under control, okay. Okay, good, good, good reporting, Shyla. Can you also find out where Peter is? 
and if he's a Kiwi and what his mate's name is. <laughs> Good reporting. Mount Crichton. It's funny how it says Mount Crichton near Glenorchy. It's closer to Queenstown than Glenorchy, but that's just sketchy reporting by the sketchy reporting times. Dude, I was gonna say I can hear a drone. I don't know if you could hear that. It's a bumblebee. Um, a fire and emergency New Zealand spokesperson said the blaze was reported about 4.30 p.m. and believed to be a controlled burn off that got out of control. Shit. Wow. Somebody fucked up and burnt down a whole section of their farmland. Damn. I wonder if that's anywhere near, um, what's the hut? The guy's hut that I went to? What's the hut? Yeah, I can't remember the name of the hut. Someone's hut. John Styler's hut. I can't remember what it was called. On the Mount Crichton loop track, there is a hut that you can go and stop at and walk inside. It used to be a little mining cottage and I'm escaping me the name. No sign of Peter? The road's also reopened, so it's all over. Okay, so we're seeing the aftermath of it. Yeah, okay. So unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna affect sunset. I kind of was getting a little, a little bit greedy, hoping that this would give us a real nice dappled pink sky sunset. Still got too long to go. somehow a responsible old mate Peter wonder why we didn't hear the sirens then if the fire is in Mount Crichton the fire brigade would have come from Queenstown I don't even think Glenorchy has a fire brigade it must have. Didn't really hear any f any. Ch we only we only heard one helicopter as well. That's a bit weird. Hmm. Would it be near where the farmer wouldn't let you walk through, not the comer? No, no, no. Funnily enough, um, Doug, where I am right now, that's the other side of that land. So I'm, I'm sitting on that farmer's land right now. But he, um, I, I, I've, I've since found out that the family is Middleton. The owners of the Queenstown Hill are named Middleton. And um, so this area is part of their farm, but they, they have opened this up to regular Joes so this is part of the Queenstown Hill walk but as part of that walk you do enter onto their private land but they've they've extended that they've allowed it right but they won't allow anyone on the back of the land the Karma bus is a beautiful vessel yes yeah, so has nothing to do with that dude nothing to do with that I mean he might own that land too I don't I don't know It is strange though, isn't it? Like when you think about, all I wanted to do was take a walk, like like walk through. So, something about that doesn't sit with me, but I understand it because like, 
if you buy a block of land and you build a house on it, you don't want someone to walk through your house. So what's the difference? Like why, like why should I be allowed to walk over that farmland if you can't, like if I can't just walk through someone's backyard and go down their driveway, because that's trespass, the same should apply to any land. But it's, when you look at this hill, it doesn't seem right, because it just looks like that's just the land, right? That's just, that, that's just New Zealand, but yeah, you can't walk on it. It's like a bit of a mind trip, I guess. I feel like Pink Floyd needs to be playing from this view. Pink Floyd, okay. Any song in particular? From the PFs? You want a trumpet? You want to cap game it up? Well, I'm sucking the last of this first Cody down very slowly. Can those dudes that dropped the water on top of the fire drop me a box of Cody's in the helicopter? Of course they can not. Comfortably numb, right on. There is no reason. What's the lyric? There is no something, something. Do you hear that? Not a drone, that's a bumblebee. Big fat black bumblebee, they're rad. They sound like a drone. There is no pain you are receiving. Jetstar, nope. Air New Zealand. Air New Zealand plane looks stealth, hey? With that black and white, their little slogan. Looks good. There is no pain you are receding. A distant ship smoke on the horizon. You are only coming through in waves. Damn, that's a good lyric. I mean, that's definitely what we're seeing here. Oh, that's why you said it. Got it. Took me a little to get that, Charlotte, but I'm there with you. I'm there with you now. I'm there with you. Incidentally, the wind has stopped. But I see the tops of the trees still moving and ash falling all around. Imagine this was your wedding day up here. And you're like getting wedding photos and you're like, dude, are you serious? This is our wedding photo? Well, this isn't going to last long, is it? What, you mean your photo? No, our wedding. We're not going to stay married. This is how we're going to get... These are our memories. She. And, uh... Peter, when did you first start smoking? Well, sir, probably the day after my wedding. We were looking at the photos from the happy day and all we could see was smoke in the background. We wanted to see the Lake Wakatipu and Cecil Peak and Walter Peak and we couldn't see shit and it got me angry and I decided to start smoking as a side effect. Do you regret that, sir? Yes, I do. Like I regret marrying. Got to think of a fake name here. Sarah? It's a bit plain. Susan. Mm. Serus. Make up a name, Serus.
The greatest guitar riff ever. Ooh. That's a big call, Hendrik, from that song. Okay. In terms of like technicalities or in terms of like familiarity? Well, okay, okay, let's change it. If you want to talk music, let's talk music, you fuckers. <laughs> what is the most notable guitar riff ever? What's the most memor- what's the most known guitar riff? Shit, man. That's a big question. With many answers. None of them right. Hmm. Most- most well-known guitar riff. I mean, Money for Nothing, it's got to be up there, right? Dire Straits, it's got to be up there. Um, Back in Black, ACDC. See, there's two that are probably as equally known as each other. Sergeant Bob's in the house. G'day, Sergeant Bob. How you doing, man? Little dancing chicken. Doug, I'm biased, but money for nothing. And I know you typed that before you'd heard me say it. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd say that's probably the most well-known guitar riff, for sure. Yeah. Yep, I'd agree. Smoke on the water. Okay, sticking with the theme of the day. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha, Charlotte. Yeah, I agree. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, no. Nah. Yeah, because it's, it's one that people play when... See, money, money for nothing doesn't really get played by novices learning how to play the guitar but smoke on the water definitely does so therefore it gets more of a higher in the um well-known category thunderstruck by akadaka yeah Thunderstruck more so than Back in Black? Yeah. Uh, it's gonna, gonna be debatable there. A debate I don't want to enter into. Although, here we are. That wind just picked up again. Shit. Stairway to Heaven, that's right. It's banned in every guitar shop. Even Nirvana, Teen Spirit. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Yep, that's up there. I'm, um... Gotta go to the bathroom. Keep an eye on that Peter Cobber. I know he's a. I know he's around here. Hey. You know what I did before when I took a slash? I purposely went a bit further, further than I needed to, to get into uh, the snow, so I could pee into the snow. There's some, something sadistic about me that wants to um, melt the snow with my pee. And like I could have just peed just over here, but I went a little bit further up the mountain to find a patch of snow, so I could be like, I'm going to kill that snow. I'm a, you know. We've already assessed I'm a little strange. Now you know.
Peter, put that stick down. I just saw some dude with a stick. I don't know what he was doing. Freaking stick guy. I don't know how that stick just appears like that. Like, what the crocky? Stick. Stick it to the man. Um, free bird. Whiz on the guy's land. Karma bust for this farmer. <laughs> Take a poo on his land. There's a list of nine riffs that are banned in guitar stores. Is that what you're saying, Sergeant Bob? Okay. Cashmere, Led Zeppelin. Some big songs being thrown around. All these songs would be good to be hearing up on Benon's Mountain. This is not my mountain. This belongs to... What's his name again? The Willie... Um, can't remember the names. Leonard Skinner, guitar riffs. Julia, hello. Hello, Julia. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to have you. Good to know you. This is my final stream from New Zealand. I'm going to have another Cody now, or should I hold out a bit? i got three left. What's the time? It's time to get more. It's 5.30. Sunset's not till 8. Sheet, I've really messed this up, haven't I? 5.30, 6.30, 7.30. Uh, I'm going to hold out till 6 p.m. for my next Cody. So that's going to be a long holdout. 25 minutes. Can I do it? Can I do it? Yes, you can. Oh, my battery's gone flat on my uh, charge panel here. My little charge battery battery pack pack. Okay, in that case, I've got to charge it off the main power bank, which I can do quite easily by plugging this in over here. How much juice have I got left in that little sucker? That's also a good question. 39! 39%! That's gonna die soon. Okay, that's alright. If that dies, it's all good. In the hood. Uh, D-Live. Give me the machine. Skins. Take a whack a tippy poo. <laughs> a whack a tippy poo. Are we not live there? What's going on? What's going on? I've always got to reset the, the D Live app, like reloaded it. It's a little frustrating, but there it is, folks. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. There it is, it's reloaded. And oh, I was about to go and grab that Cody. Wee. Wee. I'm gonna hold out till six. Till six PM. Keep an eye on the battery pack that's powering the live uh, the video go as well. When that depletes, we'll change it. Yes we will. Now we're getting a little bit more of a view here because that smoke has lifted. Charlotte says, oh, I see a spider down here. Hello, New Zealand spider. Come to me. Get on my finger. Oh, he's gone. Uh, Charlotte says, good to see you too. Miss all the great peeps of DLive. It's been pretty quiet, but I'm, I'm, um, I'm still waving the flag. Happy I didn't miss your last stream. Yeah, this is the last time I'll be streaming in this country, New Zealand town. Wow, it's been six months. Yeah.
been good. Been good. Do you guys hear any of the wind? I mean, I've got the uh, dead cat there going off both sides, actually, the back and front, but are you hearing any wind noise? Jason, hey, Gives. I've been listening to the whole time, by the way. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate the listen, man. Are you back in Oz yet? Um... Those two sentences that you just said don't really marry up. You said, hey, Gives, I've been listening this whole time, by the way. Are you back in Oz yet? Okay. feel like you're trolling me there. Had you have been listening? Okay. I hear the wind. I heard thunder earlier. Okay, you heard thunder on my stream? Hmm. Okay. I've been playing an online chess tournament. Okay. Oh, well, that would explain why you're uh, absent in the... Yeah. So, yeah, okay, you've been playing chess. Not 100% listening. Yeah, okay, so... So, no, I'm not back in Oz. No, I'm not. Not yet. Still in New Zealand. Still in NZ, and I am about to crack open. Wait a second. Thirty percentile. Uh, just checking the battery statuses here. All looks good. Kind of want to. No, I said I said I'm going to do it at six. I'm going to do it at six. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Yes, I'm still in Queenstown. Uh, we're sitting on top of Queenstown Hill. We are looking towards the west or southwest, where there has been a fire raging in Mount Crichton. Flames of 30 meters. An out of control, controlled burn has now been controlled and we should possibly see some nice skylight for sunset because of the said fire. It's cold, it's windy, there's still snow on this mountain. Uh, I've been peeing into it to melt as much as I possibly can. Little secret game of mine. And uh, well, we're just sitting up here wondering why I didn't bring more of these Cody's. There is still two more in that box, I believe, or three more. Hendrik, did your flatmates find someone to take the room? Yes, so there was a guy called Alex, who I did meet. Uh, he has since pulled out, and now Tamona, who is the mysterious other housemate, I don't know how to explain it, but um, 
she's been uh, in Schloke's room for the whole time I've been here. She's going to move into my room when I leave and become a fully fledged housemate. She's taken out from under the wing of Schloke and she's going to move into her own room. She's out there in the world, folks. She's really growing up. I can't believe how quickly they grow. One minute they're walking around in diapers and nappies and the next minute they're on their own. Yeah, she's going to move into my room. Julia, it's harvest time here. Crazy busy. I hope I can stay awake six hours ahead of you. Six hours ahead of me. So you're already... So it's 6 p.m., 7, 8, 9, 2, It's already 10 p.m. for you. Okay. I hope you can stay awake too. Hang out with us and see the sunset happen. I feel like I started this stream too early. I forgot it's night dark wasting over here as well. It's daylight savings. Get a lot more sunlight than we normally are used to. I can hear voices. Peter, Peter. Peter at. It's quarter to 10 p.m. Let me know when it's 10 p.m. for you, Jason. Let me know when it's 10 p.m. That will make it 6 p.m. for me. And I'll crack another code E. Just a little gentle reminder to anybody watching this stream. If you're watching it and you're not watching it on dlive.tv, you've got to come over to dlive.tv if you want to see, if you want to chat with me and you want me to see the chat. You could be commenting on Facebook, you could be making all these cool comments on YouTube or on Twitch or on Trovo or wherever the heck, heck it is you're watching, Twitter maybe, LinkedIn, whatever it is. I'm not seeing any of that. I'm only seeing it on dlive.tv. So if you want to chat, go to the website. It starts with a D. D for Delta. Live. dlive.tv. Television. TV. Go there. Find my channel. Gives a minute. Sign up. Make an account. You'll see me live. Then you can chat. Bam. I'll see the chat. Um, it's not even 3 p.m. here. I wish we had daylight savings. Yeah, yeah, so we're three hours ahead of you. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, true skis. I'm bad with math. 2.45 a.m. for me, Julia. A oh, 12.45. Shoot. Ouchie mama. I'm watching it on Twitch for the 1080p quality, but chatting here. Okay, this is a thing too. This is a thing that people do. Uh, the experience of the stream is often better on a different ingest, such as YouTube or Twitch. And the chat is better popped out on the DLive machine. This is something that people have reported before. So that's, that's good to know. I can still smell fire. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Ten to four here, Hendrik, as you are aware. Ten till four. Ten minutes till four. So you're only two hours away, Sharla. Four, five, ten to six for me. Four, five, six, say four, five. So you're only two hours. Okay, interesting. I thought it was three hours difference. Wait, is it, ten, is it 10 to seven for me? No, it's 10 to six. That's Kiwi for six. And seven is Kiwi for seven. 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 Kapak seven. Funny, funny accents. It's so close to English or Australian English, but it's just a little bit of a twist. A little bit of a twist on it. I wonder where that comes from. The first settler here in Queenstown was William Rees. R-E-E-S. Rees. English. Yet 
somehow, bro, they got their own sort of twist on it, didn't they, bro? It's just English, bro. Don't worry about it, bro. It's all sweet as, bro. It's Kiwi, bro. It's all the same. Don't worry about it, bro. <laughs> so how did that happen? Like, the, is it a combination of English from England and locals? Like, how did, how, did the, how did the English accent become a Kiwi accent? I guess the same question could be asked for Australia too. Like, how did we get our unique take on the English? Why can't we all be freshening our pipes, Governor? Why can't we all have accents like those guys? They were the originals, and yet here we are. Counting funny. Oh, yeah, it's really, really notably different here. <laughs> Giggle Piggles! Hey, Giggles, how you doing? Hey, Gibbs and Gibbs, how you going, Giggles? Good to see you. It's good to see you here. Hello, hello skis. Hope you have been well, Giggles. Yeah, it's been a while. Been a while, Giggle Piggles. Where have you been? What have you been doing? How come you've been missing? Where have you gone? I'm just kidding. You can come and go as you please. As you will. As you should do. Interesting. What a day. I'm good, Gives and Givers. I've been working. Yeah, you. So you're still doing the um, the uh, takeaway joint, yeah? Fast food joint. What do you? Do you, got, you guys call fast? Yeah, fast food. Of course, Americans call it fast food. Um, do you do you know it as takeaway food? We call it takeaway food. Australians call it takeaway food. It's kind of a strange saying, actually. Takeaway food. Take out. Eat in or take away. Eat in or take out. Eat in or to go? Do you want that? You, are you eating in or are you, is it to go? Is that to go or is that to stay? To stop, to go. Take away, take in. Take home, take home should be the better saying, right? Can I get a six pack of nuggets? Is that to go or to take or to, is that to, is that to stay or to go? That's all it should be, right? Food to stay means you're dining in, to go is you're going with it. Well, it doesn't matter if you're going home or to the park, you're still going, right? Take out. Yeah, we know it as take away or take out. You can say both? Yeah, 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 okay, so both, both, both sayings. Just wondering where the first, like, what was the first one though? Like, what was the original? And what about doggy bags? What the fuck is a doggy bag? Can I get a doggy bag? Are you giving it to your dog? No, 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 it's for me later on. Wouldn't that be a human bag then? Can I get a human-y bag? Oh, we've only got doggy bags, I'm afraid. See, a doggy bag to me is a bag or a box that's not quite cleaned. It's like the, the health and safety requirements to manufacture pet food aren't as high as the health and safety requirements to manufacture human food. So if you ask for a doggy bag, you're kind of asking for a bag that hasn't got, or a box that's not cleaned properly. That's how I look at it. Chinese, you, are you, we're gonna, you work in Chinese. Oh, that's Jason, I thought that was Giggles. For here or to go? Yeah, for here or to go. That makes more sense. Doggy bag in Canada. Or a home style restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why doggy? It's like the leftovers that, are they going to, the, to your pet or are you gonna eat them? Now, sir, I can either give you a clean container or I can give you a dirty one. 
What are you going to do with that food? Are you, going to, are you actually going to give it to your pet doggy or are you going to eat it? If you're going to eat it, I'm going to give you a clean container. Otherwise, I'll just wrap it up in this shrapnel, this old bag I've got laying down here. Good enough for the dog. May contain traces of peanuts. What's the warning on the food? This, this item has been prepared on a food line that also prepares, you know, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian and it's like, well, just be aware that if you eat this muesli bar, it's been packaged on a food processing line that also packages meat products. Flyed lat, flyed lat. McDonald's here is doing adult Happy Meals with liquor in it. Oh shit, yeah. I don't work. It's not liquor. It's adult toys. Ours has liquor in it. Huh. Well, that's pretty cool. So you can go and get twisted at Macca's, or oh, you call it uh, Mickey D's. Yeah. Isn't that strange? We call it Macca's. You call it Mickey D's. It's MacDonald. So we say Macca, but you go, f instead of Mac, you go Mick. Where does Mick come from in Mac? Mac. Now I've got to hand it to the Aussies now. Macca's is closer to McDonald's than Mickey D's. McDonald's, McDonald's. We call it chew and spew. <laughs> There's another story there, I guess, but in Canada, in Canada, it's McDick's. McDick. Golden Arches. Do you know one thing about this town that I just realized just yesterday talking with a, another driver? There's no train line. Like, I don't think that's just a Queenstown thing. I don't think train lines are that popular in New Zealand. Like there is no, there's no, there's no Queenstown station, for instance. There's just, there isn't, they just don't have train lines. Oh, hello, CBG, CBJ, CBJ. I think I saw you at the remarks yesterday. I filmed a vlog for that incredible day. How you doing, CBJ? Good to see you. Yeah, that was me. Uh, yesterday or the day before. I was there both days, but I was filming yes uh, the day before. CBJ, good to see you. Uh, welcome over to um, to D Live. Let me ask you, did we talk? Did we speak? Did I tell you about? Um, was, are you the ones on the bus coming down the hill yesterday, uh, the day before, when we talked about cryptocurrency? Phil and... What was your partner's name? Fuck. Nah, but I remember Phil. So you got, a, you got alcohol at McDonald's. That's cool. Uh, and CBJ, it's nice to see you over here. I appreciate you coming over to DLive. You must have been hearing my spiel on YouTube or Facebook. Probably YouTube. Cool, man. Um, is it six o'clock yet? Can I crack this uh, Cody? What's the time? What's the time? It's three more minutes, man. She three minutes. But I will stick with the plan. Wow, I smell something really sweet. That's weird. It smells like um, it smells like nightclub, like like fake smoke. No, nah, man, we didn't speak. Uh, I wasn't sure it was you. I saw a video of yours months ago for opening day at season, and then I heard your voice. Oh wow, that's cool, CBJ. That's really cool. Yeah, I did an opening day at Remarks and uh, Coronet Peak, and I also did a closing day at Coronet Peak, but I won't be here for the closing day at Remarks, because that's on the 16th. I fly out on Thursday, which is a bit of a shame, but 
I found your channel again and I realized it was you. It was from the viewpoint at Shadow. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, shit, dude. Were you the were you the snowboarder with the uh, with the uh, blonde hair coming out the bottom of the the beanie? That's cool, dude. Because uh, yeah, I shot a little video up there. Yeah, so I shot a video explaining that I wasn't shooting a video. I was up there like, dude, this view is so rad. I got to shoot a video, and I'm gonna tell the video that I'm not gonna shoot a video of the the actual conditions. I'm like, okay, guys, I shot a video yesterday. It was hard to see anything but it was rad today it's about me i'm gonna be snowboarding i'm not gonna be bothering filming but have a look at what we got and i did like a pano of the whole and that was you up there with me yeah there was a couple of couple of crew up there yeah that's cool man that's cool well welcome to d live and thanks for coming by now but i got a green and red jacket okay i think i know who you are funnily enough you'll probably be in that video because i did pan around a little well, I appreciate it either way, man. That's that's really cool. Yeah, we're just doing a last stream here because I'm I'm I've been here six months now and I'm flying out on Thursday, and um, yeah, I thought it'd be rad to see the sunset up here from Queenstown Hill. We have a little fire action going down there in Mount Crichton. It's it's under control, but it's got this. It's actually quite a beautiful haze, which will turn pink hopefully as the sun gets lower. And I brought up a a beer and a few Cody's, and I'm just trying to prolong I want to drink when the sun's going down but you know what that's got to be 6 p.m. now I'm gonna check again I'm gonna check again I'm gonna check again what time is it it's bang on 6 I said I'd wait till 6 p.m. folks that's 6 p.m. I'm gonna crack another Cody I got three more of these now if you're a Kiwi uh, CBJ if you're if you're in New Zealand if you're from New Zealand, you'll be like, why is this dickhead drinking this Cody crap? The reason I'm drinking this crap is because another streamer here on DLive, or used to be on DLive, uh, from New Zealand, always drank Cody, and I always said, if I ever get to New Zealand, I'm going to try the Cody. And I know it's not great. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that twice, to the point where I've bought 230 blocks. <laughs> Haven't learnt my lesson. But I know that this is the last time I'm going to get to drink them, so. 60 seconds late. Damn it, Hendrik. Wouldn't that be amazing if I got it exact again? Yeah, I live here too. Unfortunately, I had to fly back to Auckland in June, so I missed opening days, hence why I saw your videos early in the season. Oh, so you were searching YouTube for um, opening days remarks and Coronet Peak and my videos popped up. Dude, that means YouTube, and by the way, CBJ, cheers. That means YouTube is working. My channel is quite well suppressed on YouTube. I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm actually over it. I don't really, hang on a second. Oh yeah. Yeah, I used to get really concerned about it and try to work out what I could do to flip the algorithm or trip the algorithm or whatever, but now I just create content for myself and if YouTube want to keep pushing me down and suppressing me, whatever. It's not, it's not about that, it's more about putting my content out there. But I used to get really flustered with it and concerned with it, now I genuinely don't care about it. Mm. But having said that, when someone comes in saying that they were searching a specific term and came to my video and then there then I bring them over to D live then this is great this is cool yeah this mean this means at least one thing I'm doing is working yeah so overall I would say that the season the winter here has been spectacular like this has been a good a great ski season for Queenstown and for the two hills here. Or, or I'm not too sure about Cardrona and Treblecone. I didn't didn't get to them, but definitely for the NZ Ski brand for the Remarks and Coronet Peak, this has been an absolute cracker season. Some real good conditions, like real good. Best in like some of the locals I was speaking with said this is the best they've seen in 16 years. That's a, that's a big call. 
And on that note, to the question that was asked a lot earlier in the stream, would I come back for another season and work, on specifically in regards to the weather and the, and the snow itself, my take on that is it's a huge gamble. Like, and I know from speaking to the roads crew about last season, so 2021, Coronet Peak didn't open for three weeks later than their scheduled opening date. So if you were a lifty or if you were in food and beverage or in rentals or in retail or guest services or any anything aside from driving or roads or um, some of the admin, uh, some of the, the back end, you know, the, the wheels, let's just say, the ones that make it all work, you were on hold for your job. And I was talking to, a, actually it was on the bus, I was talking to a lifty on the bus, uh, on an all bus, like a, a, a just a regular bus, a commuter bus, and she was saying that last year uh, she got into town like I did early in the season to get everything set up, and then uh, they just kept getting like an email saying, "Oh, we're not opening today. We're going to push it till tomorrow or the day after," and then it kept going the day after, the day after, and then it all comes down to it. Three weeks later is when they opened, and that's because there was no snow. So in that time, because you're getting emails saying, oh, we're not opening today, we're gonna, you know, we'll reconvene tomorrow, we'll check again tomorrow. You don't really have time to go and get another job. So this girl was like, I got so close to rock bottom because I didn't have time to go and get a job because you don't know if you're gonna be needed the next day if it starts snowing or if it doesn't. So it's an epic gamble to, to, like, to make the trip over here and to get set up to not know if it's going to even happen. CBJ, if you're going to spend a season here, my advice, don't work for the ski resorts. Now, I would agree with that and I will definitely revisit that comment and that train of thought once I've left. Once I'm back in Australia and this is, you know, all behind me, I'll definitely elaborate on, on why, I, why I agree with you on that point. But for the time being, I'll just keep, I'll just leave it at that, but I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I would also say that if you are going to work for the hill, find a job that's going to... No, nope, not going to do it. I was almost going to do it. I was almost going to dig in. I'm not going to. I'll leave it there and we'll talk about it another time. By the way, sunset, beautiful. Not quite sunset yet. Yeah. Uh, CBJ, you can meet some great people and have some fun, but the town is full of like-minded people, so it doesn't matter where you're working, really. That's a good point. That's a real good point. Yeah. Nothing about the work or the conditions or anything like that, but the fact that you do meet good crew, but that can happen anywhere in town. Yeah, okay. Yep, that's a, that's a consideration I hadn't thought of before. Yeah. I will, I will say this though, like without getting into it too deep, I will say the, the jobs on the mountain are very thankless. It's a very thankless role just working for the hill. It's very, um, it's, it's all consuming and it's thankless. Hendrik, how are the people from the cafe you worked in for the first few weeks going? Well, when I went in there to let them know I wasn't coming back, we had a great conversation, great chat. I met, you know, the head chef again, the owner, and just really nice people, like really genuine people. I'm bummed that I'm not going back there. Just the way it all worked out, the timing, and yeah, it's, they, they were just really lovely people. Really lovely. Great food too, great food. Uh, uh, CBJ, we're talking about Bespoke Kitchen. I, I did about, I guess I did three weeks there before the season started. 
and um, just really, I mean, I've worked in kitchens a lot before and I always enjoy the vibe in a kitchen with good crew and good people. And that was just random that I happened to fall into a really welcoming crew, welcoming bunch of people. Yeah. And if I was to stay, you know, and <laughs> so in addition to all that, the pay at the restaurant was better than the pay on the hill. So the hourly rate was more than what I got on the hill. So it's very strange that that's the way it is, but that's the way it is. Other businesses paying more dollars to and less or no mucking around with the app. But yeah, yeah. So you've got it, you've, you've, you've nailed it. And, and sadly, this is a very, it seems to be a repeating, a very common theme. If you talk to anybody about NZ Ski and about working for the mountain, you come across these exact comments over and over again. So how come it never gets addressed? Andrew, I've got to go to work, man. No worries, man. Thanks, dude. Thanks, Andrew. See you soon, man. Thanks for swinging by, buddy. Always appreciate seeing you in the chat, dude. It's, it's good to see you, dude. Uh, wages, etc., are likely to change again for the worse once more people get across on working visas. Oh, so what? They'll, they'll reduce the wages? Andrew, my goal this summer is to catch up with you and have a few beers. Dude, that'd be so sick, man. I'd love to see you again, man. It's been, it's been over 20 years, man. Last time I saw you would 1996. Dude, yeah, let's do it, man. Yeah, man. Keep, in, keep, me, in, keep me in the loop. Fuck yeah. What a blast. Let's talk electroplating. <laughs> um, it's ski resorts all over the world. They exploit the staff because they know they can. People want the experience of working on the hill. I think I think you're right. Hey, it's 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 a common common thread with. I'm just trying to think because I've also worked for uh, Whistler Blackcomb. What was the name of the the company that I that employed me there? You know how NZ Ski is Trojan Holdings. What's? I still have pay slips from, and uh, from um, Whistler. I don't really feel like. I mean, I didn't work there long enough though. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I just didn't get that vibe there in Canada, but we will do. Yeah, cheers, Andrew. Thanks, man. See you soon, buddy. Yeah, I don't know. It's a strange one because, like, they'll, they'll offer, you know, like, oh, you got your season pass and... Oh, here we go. I'm getting... I'm digging in now. I'm... The only reason I'm not doing this conversation now, the only reason I'm not having this full conversation now is because I feel like I could probably articulate myself better when I'm away from it. So right now I'm still in it. Even though I'm not working for them anymore, I'm still here. And I feel like given, like I fly out on Thursday and then give me a week or two back in Australia when I'm sort of back in my old rituals and my old habits and back in my old life, I'll be able to step away from it all and say okay here's the way i want to express this and here's what i want to say about that um all these points that we've touched on will obviously get tapped deeper and i'll elaborate more because there has there has been incidents right there has been incidents that do need to be discussed but while it's still kind of like playing out or, or it's not playing out but while it's still still on the stove top if you like i want to get home and then have to re i want to reheat this later I need a doggy bag for this, is what I'm saying. And it's gonna be fed to the dogs. I got water for thirsty dogs. You better believe it. Uh, Cardrona Treble Cone is a better company than NZ Ski though, so they'd be the ones to join if you decided to work in a resort again. Yeah, right, interesting, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll just, I'll just say this super quickly. The first thing when I see that comment is, well, yeah, but they don't have the mountains like NZ Ski has the remarks and Coronet Peak and Mount Hutt and they that gets pitched at you it's like oh you get a three 
season pass to hit all three mountains. But reality sets in, you're never gonna get to go to, go to Mount Hutt. Like when are you gonna, when are you gonna go to Mount Hutt? Oh, I'm sorry, you're working for NZ Ski, you're working for the season. When do you think you're gonna go to Mount Hutt, dude? You're gonna need a, you're gonna need a good few days up there. Like when, when are you gonna do that? No, dude, you gotta, you gotta work, eh? So I got a season pass that, that includes Mount Hutt, but I can't go there because I've got to work? Yeah. Well, that's shit. Bad luck. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's just one little... That's, that's as deep as I'm going to go. Give me a bunch more of these, though, and I'll really let it fly. Water for thirsty dogs. It's nothing but water. Thirsty dogs. Looking forward to some cap games when I'm back home for sure. Music streams, hell yeah. Yeah. Man. Sun is bright. Dip, dip, you sun. Well, at the end of the day, man, um, you can say you worked a season at Coronet Peak. That's cool to say. Whether rather you worked in a cafe, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has the um, yeah, it's got the um, the accolade associated with it. Not that um, not that it's going to go on a resume or anything for me. Like I just did it because. I don't know. I just wanted to come back to New Zealand and I lived here in the year 2000 and I, I didn't work for the hill. I worked in a restaurant. And you know, this, okay, so this is, okay, get this. Get this. In the year 2000, I lived in this town and I did not work for the mountain. I worked in a restaurant called Roaring Megs. It's 22 years later and on Monday... I'm going to see and hang out with the old head chef and owner and consequently my boss of that restaurant, him and his wife. I've hung out with them throughout this season, but not, not while working, but before the season. Now, the point I'm making is, if you fast forward 22 years from today, will I be going and hanging out with my old boss from NZ Ski? in 22 more years, like I am going to go and hang out with my boss from 22 years earlier? No. So there's a comparative example of like what it means to work for the mountain, I guess. Uh, did you enjoy the times you could ski? Doug, yes, with an epic butt. There's an epic butt coming for that, and I will dip deeper into that later. But there's an epic butt there. And I don't mean an ass, I mean an epic B-U-T. Uh, Cardi's and treble cone is just better for less mucking around with days, hours. They're a bit more transparent with that stuff. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, so so um, CBG, CBJ, you you work in town? You, are you, do you, you don't have to say who you work for, but if it's a restaurant or something, just say hospi hospo, I guess. Like, yeah. That's that's a good way to look at it, though. Like the the impact that working in that restaurant had for me in the year two thousand has extended to the point where I'm still very interested in what happens after then. Whereas once I leave here, I probably won't be that interested in. Well, actually, that's not true. I will, I will still pay attention to next seat. I will still pay attention to next season, like how the how the snow's falling, and I'll still keep the apps for the Met Weather Service and whatnot to see how the snow looks and Coronet and, and Remarkables and stuff. So yeah, I guess that's not exactly. Yeah, not that. Not. I have a point, but it's not as sharp as I thought it was originally. That point, but it is still a good point. I still get half points for that. Like if that was like. I get to go around and go past go and collect my 200. I still made a full circuit of the board. That was a shit metaphor, dude. I'm trying to put Monopoly into that? It didn't work at all. 
when you get back to Oz, I guess, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the big but. I was going to work snowboard sales for Torpedo 7, but I had to go back to Auckland in June, so I had to let that go. Now working car rentals. So on that note, there is a car rental place here. Oh no, it's a car cleaning place. There's a, there's a car cleaning place that does give you a season pass. There's actually a few jobs in town that aren't mountain linked, but you do get a season pass by working for them. They obviously just buy it for you up front. Um, and they still pay good wages. I can't remember the names of them though, but my housemate told me about it. But Torpedo 7's rad. By the way, I uh, did use my staff discount in Torpedo 7 a bunch of times. Uh, one of the things I bought was this headlamp right here, which I'll be using later when the sun dips and we need to get off the mountain. This is a headlamp from Torpedo 7. Very cool. Now, while I look over here, I just realized my battery for my stream encoder has now depleted. So I'm going to put a fresh battery pack on the stream encoder. It does have its own battery life, but um, I'd rather use power bank because at least it fills that power back up and then when it depletes we can use the power bank itself so oh the um stream encoder itself so let me just plug in a new power bank here i'll be back with you in a second from whence is it this is the said power bank i'm going to be putting in for charge we have chargage. <laughs> yep, cool, charging up. Uh, worked one shift for NZ Ski when I got back to Queenstown after Auckland and quit at the end of the day. I could tell it wasn't gonna be worth the pass. Oh, wow, man. Damn, that doesn't sound good for uh, NZ Ski. What was your What was your role? Yeah, that's not a very good uh, accolade, is it? You did one shift. <laughs> you did a single shift and went, Nah, this isn't worth it. Shit, dude. What were they having you do on that shift? Slaughter baby pigs. I'm not too sure what the job was, but slaughtering baby pigs wouldn't be fun. I'll give you a season pass if, if you just walk over there and cut the hind legs off that little pig. What's that for though? Oh, it's part of the job. Uh, nah. That's a bit of a stretch. I'm not suggesting that they ask staff to do that. I'm just saying that whatever it was, it must have been something that was like, no, I'm not doing that. Hendrik, was the pass worth it for you, Gibbs? So... Yes, with a but. Yes, with a but. You were in guest services. I'd already had every local tell me they suck as a company, but I tried anyway. And then gabbed. Gaped. You're right, 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 right. Uh, Julia, the restaurant owner and head chef you're talking about, is this the restaurant you asked the chef about? Has the piano lessons going? Wow, no, but Julia, that's, that's so cool that you remember that. That's uh, Lino. Uh, from the Strand in Glenelg, Adelaide, South Australia. Um, but it, the same situation can be said there. So this guy, uh, I'm still in contact with to this day uh, after working. I mean, I worked at the Strand for nearly 10 years. On and off. Nah, probably eight years. But yeah, I still very, yeah, very interested in how he's doing and how his family's going. But yeah, not that person. Good memory though, good memory. I'm gonna change the exposure here, folks. Drop it down a little. Sun's getting a little less uh, brightness to it. But good memory, Julia. I'm glad that some the stories I tell stick. You know, that you do remember those stories. Just as a side note, I will, I will retell that story because it's a fucking funny one. So this is, any anybody that's worked in any restaurants will know about this. There's always gags and, jo and, and um, jokes that are played on new staff members. In fact, in some restaurants, 
uh, staff come and go so often that it's it's a non-stop uh, entertainment source for those long-time staff members to be able to play these jokes on new staff members over and over again. So this one instance, so I just landed in, in this new town, Glenelg in South Australia in Adelaide, and I got a job in a restaurant. And the owner of the, sorry, the chef was Lino, head chef Lino. And this staff member who sort of befriended me on the first day, he came up to me and said, oh, hey, I, I, I hear you're new. I was pizza chef, he was, uh, he, was, he was front of house. He's like, oh, I hear you're new. Just a heads up, if you wanna make a good impression on Lino, the head chef, ask him about his grandmother's piano lessons. She's just started getting lessons and I'm sure he'd love to talk to you and you'd get a good report. And I'm like, oh, cool, thanks, man. This, guy, this guy's name is Peter, I shit you not. This is Peter. <laughs> G'day, Pete, if you're watching on Facebook. I don't think we're still Facebook buddies, but um, either way, he told me to do that. And so as the day progressed and I sort of got more comfortable with the, the job and whatever, Lino came over and sort of, sort of talked to me about this and that. And I said, oh, yeah, everything's going good, man. Thanks, thanks for giving me, this is a, um, you know, one of my first actual shifts. I'd already done two trials. I said, oh, thanks for giving me a shift after the trials. And he's like, yeah, no problem. You seem like a nice guy, all good. And I just said, oh, and um, yeah, how's your, uh, how's your grandmother going with the piano lessons? Like I, I hear she's learning to play the piano. And he looks at me straight in the eyes and he goes, I don't know who set you up to this, but that's fucked up. Don't talk to me again. And he walks off. And I'm like, fuck, what have I said? What have I done? Hey, I was, I was like, that, that, that's the first instance of anything strange or anything odd. And I was genuinely baffled. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Hey, I was like, and I went over to Pete and I said, dude, what, 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 what's going on? Hey, like I, I, I did, I asked him, I just happened to mention the piano lessons and he, he blew his top and he, and he told me don't talk to him again and he walked off. And Pete's like, oh, you know, don't worry, he's with this and that, he'll, he'll warm to you, you know, it's all good. And so then the day goes on a little longer and whatever, and you know, whatever, it's after service and we're chatting about something and I and just happened to sort of say something again about it. And he says to me, um, my mother or my grandmother lost both her hands in the war and I don't know why you thought or I don't know who set you up for this to think that that'd be a funny thing to do, but it's not funny. And yeah, just don't, just, you're gonna have to work harder to, basically the, he didn't say those words, but the message was, you're gonna have to work a lot harder to win me over because I know someone in this restaurant set you up to do that and that's fucked. So you're gonna have to put your head down and try to build a rapport with me otherwise. And I, and I went home from that day thinking, Fuck, man, this is going to be difficult. When I came back the next day, we were talking about it, and it it came out pretty quickly. Not, it lasted a little while, but it but sooner than soon, it came out that all of it was a joke. The whole thing was a joke. Not only was like me asking the joke, but pretending that the other staff member, like Lino, had no idea who put me up to it. That was also part of the joke. So Lino had. This is how it worked. This is what had happened. Lino had gone to Pete and said, hey, Pete, got a new guy starting. He's going to be in pizzas. Um, I want to get him with this gag. So you, you just lead him in with this line about this, my grandmother having piano lessons. That's all you got to do. Just lead him in and I'll do the rest. And this is what I'm saying, like hospitality. And in, in that case, that particular restaurant, it wasn't like, not once did Lino say to me, you know, you you got to do this better or you, you should have cut those differently or you should have done that. He didn't give a fuck about what I was doing in the job. He only concerned himself with how can I best get this guy with a, with a, a simple gag? Like I want to, I want to get him because he's, he's fresh meat and I want to, and that's, and, and when that happened, I, I said to him, this is all a joke, dude. You're, this is all a gag. I'm like, all right, if that's how it is here, I am, I am in, I am in this for, I'm, I got plenty of my own gags. If that's how you guys work here, have I got the job? Am I good? Am I, am I, am I employed? And he's like, you're, you're in dude. If the way you took that, you're in. And I'm like, all right. And from then on, it was like every chance we could ever get to get a gag 
we, we took it. And I worked for them for like, yeah, close to 10 years just because there's this, the vibe that they create or that he created, this is from the head chef down, the vibe that he created made working for him and working god awful hours, split shift, double shifts, every sh every day of the week, fucking triple turnover tables, all the like making pizzas in a wood oven where you're you got no space to even move. All the shit that we went through was worth it because the vibe that they created. And that vibe, you, I did not get up here on the mountain. I did not get that. Well, I thought I had it, and then something happened, and that vibe. Funnily enough, the back of their buses literally says good vibes. Live it, love it. I didn't get it. I did not. I, I lived it. I had no time to love it, and there was no good vibes. So that's how I'm relating those two sort of small stories together. Roll on the floor laughing my ass off. Dude, it was so cool, Hendrik. That, God bless Lino. I uh, got a split, catch you back in Australia. Thanks, Doug, I'll see you in Australia, man. Streaming back when I'm home, thanks, man. Uh, CBJ says, they were just swarmed with customers and understaffed. It was gonna be stressful and not worth the low wage when others were paying, yeah, yeah. And that, that obviously never changed up there. Always understaffed, people leaving, people leaving, people not happy, people complaining. Yeah. What a shame. Piano lessons. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> he interviewed me as well. Lino, it was his sister, Danny, who was this, she wasn't second chef at that time, but she became second chef or sous chef. But she interviewed me and then he came over and cause I'd just come from Canada. Wait, had I gone Canada then England? I think I went Canada, England, Australia. By the way, the wind has stopped. It's quite nice up here without that wind. Yeah, um, and I, I remember saying to Lino, like a few months later, I was like, that interview, like the, we just sat down at a table and had a chat. That was the only time that you've ever been genuinely like, like serious with me. Every other time, there's been a motive of a gag behind it. By the way, Lino, hello if you're watching on Facebook, or Jill if you're watching, or Alyssa if you're watching, that's his wife and daughter if you're watching. The only time, and he'll, he'll back this up, the only time he's ever been, well actually, no, there might have been rostered like times when we're talking about the roster and stuff. Do you know what, he, do you know what Lino, this is how rad this restaurant was, right? So, the restaurant was about, maybe five, maybe six kilometers from the vert ramp. So the only reason I went to Adelaide was to go skateboarding. I moved, I moved interstate because they had a better vert ramp at West Beach. My local vert ramp was Mona Vale, not very local to me. I lived in the Shire. I used to drive to Mona two times on a weekend, stayed at Glebe and halfway with my cousin and then went back out on a Sunday, skated, skated Friday, Skated Saturday, jammed some Saturday night, skated Sunday, back to the Shire Sunday evening. Uh, and so when this vert ramp got built in West Beach, South Australia, I went over there for opening day competition and demo. And I was like, that's it, I'm moving here. I'm moving, this, this vert ramp is way better, I'm moving. And I just moved, I just, just drove over to Adelaide and started a new life. And the, the way that the roster worked was on a Friday night was the big jam nights. Wednesday, Fridays, and Sundays were the big sessions. That's when everybody came into town and skated vert. Friday nights was obviously the busy night at the restaurant. Lino said to me, if I put you on Friday days, what's the possibility of you coming back after you've finished skating? And I'm like, um, it's definitely doable. Like, I mean, we skate till sunset. There's, there's lights at West Beach, but they hadn't been finalized at that point, I don't, I don't think. So I said, look, if, if sunset's at say 10 past seven or whatever it is, I can probably be back here 
7.30, you know, because I was on a push bike, like I used to cycle up and down. It was, that's what I'm saying, it was like, I lived in Glenelg, worked in Glenelg, and skated in West Beach. So I just bike right, and there's, there's bike trails everywhere in Adelaide. So I was like, well, I can probably get back. And he's like, all right, cool. If you can come back after your skate, you can come back. So it wasn't like, there wasn't like you clock off and you clock back on. It was like, I'm like, oh, and, and then I get fed of, obviously I get dinner. And it's like, there, there was never a time when I was like, oh, fuck, I got to go back to work after skating. It was like, oh, I'm going back to the restaurant. Cool. And I go back there, have a beer, eat food, keep working. And j just, I just can't think of another job where you're so, like, it, it didn't even, cons I didn't even consider that this was putting me out. It was more about, like, I'm doing Lino a favor. And by the way, I'm also working alongside Ante, who was a great pizza cook with me. Like, we and him, just joke after joke after joke, right? So it's almost like going back to, to the restaurant after skating was like, the, con the good times just continue into the night. Like, I'm, I'm, and I had a few beers at the skate park, cycled back a little bit, a little bit twisted, get to work, crack another beer, keep cooking pizzas it's in an open restaurant there's heaps of chicks coming in tuning up girls and chatting and just it was so so sick hey eh? yeah and that came from the top down that's the point i was i was making there it came from the top down lino never said to me you have to work friday nights so you're gonna have to only skate for half an hour or you can't you can only do one one week then you got to do one week off it was, it was like Nah, it wasn't like that. It's like, oh, you, you want to skateboard? Okay, you go skateboarding. What are the chances of you coming back once you're finished? Pretty, pretty high. I mean, I was on the way home. Like, it's not like I was going out of my way. And that came from him filtered down. Hendrik, were the customers happy with NZ Ski? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, Yes and no. Defin definitely a mixed bag of answers there, for sure. There's definitely some frustrated customers. Good, good question, Hendrik. You got, yeah, you guys are asking the, the deep questions. Uh, CBJ, uh, would really love to hear your full experience with it, man, when you're ready to share. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd happily talk. Yeah, like I said, I just want to be away from it so I can fully reflect on it. Uh, I have to say, Whistler is totally different. I always have great vibes in Canada, Julia. So it's not it's not across every ski field. It's certain... Okay, fair. That's fair. Sun's going to set behind soon. Let's get a little more of a height angle here, I guess. Let's go up a little. Around a little. Up a little and around a little. The sun's going to be... To the west. Yeah. Very interesting um, trying trying to, or not trying to, but just comparing this job to other jobs and then trying to work out what it is that changes jobs. Like, I'm really fumbling my words here. What I'm trying to say here, or what I'm fumbling to get at is that I guess I'm highlighting the point again that it comes from the top down. So if there was, if there was more of a, I mean, if if, I guess if NZ Ski actually lived by their motto of live it, love it, then there might not be such an issue. But for reasons I won't go into right now, that's not how it is. You don't get to love it because you're living it because you're working it like I said I would love to have gone to Mount Hutt I would love to have gone to Mount Hutt but when would that ever happen that's not going to happen Wind has 
stopped entirely. It's dead still up here. Perfect. No white caps on the Wakatipu anymore? Oh, there are still some white caps out there. Okay. Uh, I can't remember what kind of job you did at Whistler. So I worked in the um, kitchen as a breakfast prep chef. So there's a program in Whistler, much like they do have here at Coronet Peak. It's called, Whistler was called First Tracks? No, Fresh Tracks. Fresh Tracks and Coronet Peak is First Tracks. And what it means is um, you have a season pass or a day pass or whatever it is, and you pay a little extra and you get on a gondola. It's a gondola in Whistler, not a chairlift. You get on a gondola that goes up the mountain one hour before opening time. The idea is obviously that you get up there before everybody else and get access to all the fresh tracks. Whether you want to stay on piste or whether you want to go off piste, you get the first after a snow night and a bluebird day, you get the pick of the fresh, untouched virgin snow. Which is what all snowboarders want. Not many skiers want that, or some skiers go for powder, but most skiers like their on-piste stuff. But most snowboarders will be like, yeah, I'll give me the off-piste uh, fresh deep powder for sure. Uh, part of the package in Whistler was also to have breakfast. So I think it was even earlier than an hour I, I feel like it, here it's an hour earlier, but I think Whistler was a bit earlier than, a bit longer. Might have been an hour and a half, might have even been two hours earlier. But either way, um, you get breakfast, you get the gondola up and you get breakfast and then you get onto the hill. Because uh, the, so Whistler and Queenstown are a bit different. Whistler, the township of Whistler, so that town down there, this here would be the ski field. So you'd take a gondola straight up from the town, whereas here you've got to drive out to the hill. So it's all in the one area, or there's two mountains, but it's accessed from the same spot. Um, so my job was to get on a, the last gondola going up the mountain at like, it's either 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. I think it was 10 p.m. gondola. Go up to the top. It was a place called the Roundhouse Lodge, still there. Google it if you want, Roundhouse Lodge, Whistler top of the mountain in that lodge would be where I'd be preparing the breakfasts for fresh tracks so all night I'd be making uh, the food for that breakfast and you're looking at catering for a couple of hundred people 300 people 400 people and that's me and one of the chef uh, and it's pretty slothful the, the food prep it's all deep uh, it's all rehydrated, vacuum sealed. There's no, there's no cooking art to it. It's just mass production. Like the sausages come in a big fucking frozen box and all you do is like smack them on the ground and they snap apart and then you slide these into a, you have a, a bain-marie that's on wheels. Bain-marie is a, like a, a heated up uh, tray uh, with, in this, in this case, it's like an oven with trays that slot into it. It's on wheels and you have like, two of these ovens for sausages. You have two for uh, uh, scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs come in a plastic bag, it's vacuum sealed. All you do is like open the, pla uh, take the plastic bag out of the box, dump it in a hot, a vat full of boiling water, like a huge open, like climb over the top of it, open up the top, jump these in, stir it all up. And these plastic bags just heat up and cook the eggs and then when they come out you just shake them up shake up the plastic bag that's scrambled eggs put it in the bain marie at breakfast time the the server comes along and pops a hole in it tips them out and then they're cooked they're done um that was eggs and uh, and bacon was the same just lay out the bacon rashes and fucking gr fr put them in the bain marie they cook slowly over time it's really slothful food, right? Really slothful. Um, really laid back, easy job. Uh, not that I condone this, but there wasn't uh, one single shift that I did on that job where I wasn't, uh, let's just say, enjoying uh, one of Canada's uh, legal pastimes. Let's just say. It's illegal in many other countries, but it was legal in Canada. And uh, there wasn't a single shift where I didn't 
So only, I worked with one other guy, his name, I always thought, or I was remembering wrong, but I thought his name was Jean-Francois. It wasn't Jean-Francois, that was a snowboarder I rode with. I can't remember the name of the chef I worked with, but it is on video, so I could probably dig it up. But the first shift I worked with him, I met him and he's like, hey, he was definitely French Canadian though, you'll hear his accent. He's like, hey, what's up bro, hey, that's Kiwi. Anyway, he started talking and then told me about the job and this and that. And then at, I mean, I got up there at 11 or whatever and all the staff are leaving. So everyone's going off the mountain and then it's just me and him up there. And he's like, uh, do you smoke weed? I'm like, uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, little, yeah, no. Uh. Basically, uh, well, yeah, in Canada, apparently. And then we, we had to make cookies and we did. And we definitely made a whole bunch of our own. So the point of that was, oh, that's what I was doing in Canada. Breakfast prep for fresh tracks. Uh, CBJ, the one day I worked at Entered Ski, we had all the customers come down at the end of the day and complain it was shaping up to be a disaster. Was that this season? Was that this season, dude, or was that another season? I would so do a landscape shot of the lake right now. It's fucking beautiful. Dude, we're not even in the better spot. We should be up higher so you can see it all, but there was too much wind up there before. Uh, off all the way, two hours. Julia, off all the way? What, what's, that in re what's that in reference to, off all the way? Off all the way two hours. Not sure what that's in reference to. It was this season. Ah. So you worked up the at Coronet this season or was it the remarks for that one day? Hey was! How you doing was? Arthur Nizzle gives and give us. G'day was. Funnily enough, in the chat there, folks, was from Oz. The last person I was with in New Zealand, not in the year 2000, because I I don't often talk about this, but I did come back here in, was, you'll remember, was it 2016 or 2017? Uh, me and Was were both here in this town, Queenstown, and the Remarkables, uh, for about four days, shooting a video. And I can't remember if it was 2016 or 2017. But was you'd be you'd be amazed, dude. Like I, I went out a few times to. Um, so funnily enough, I had to go to the library to do some um, printing of certain documents to get my passenger endorsement for my license. All this other stuff. The license, like the registration place, was just near. Well, it's a place called Remarkables Park, uh, and the Ramada where you and I stayed. That area. Well, the the library is directly next door. So I went there a bunch. That whole area, dude, it is, it's like a city now. It's so different, man. Like, uh, good to see you, Was Hendrik, hey, it was. Guest services at the snow center in town. Oh, dude, that would have been hectic. That would have been hectic. Yeah, that would have been a tough, tough gig, for, even just for that one day. Skiing and gondola ride, the two hours, oh, what, that, that was in reference. Your, where you live, Julia, it's two hours away from the skiing and gondola ride? Okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, things have changed in this town, man. Like, even in that short amount of time since we've been, since we were here, it's, it's so different, man. Like, there's so much, like, development down there. There's a bypass. They're, they're, they're changing the road layout. I, I, I don't quite get how that's going to work, but there's going to be a Queenstown bypass. Yeah. Either way, um, I'm, I'm leaving on Thursday, so this has been six months here, and really, I really enjoyed, like, I love this place. Like, really love it. Yeah. I'll give you a view uh, just over this way if you want to see was this is as you would be well aware the remarkables let me give you a little zoom action the remarkables you've been there 
you know it. Although the access road is around the back corner there. Uh, in front of it is Kelvin Heights. This is Queenstown Hill where we're sitting. I'll just get that wide again. This is Queenstown Hill. We did, I have been to the summit and I did a stream from the summit, but it's super windy up there. So I actually just kind of came down to this area here. Right in front of us in this section just here is this little, um, it's like the Queenstown Hill timepiece where you can go and sit and reflect on different things. Uh, where's my cable? Oh, it's gonna, gonna go around this way. On this side of me, where are we here? On this side of me, uh, just below is where I live. Uh, Huff Street, well, Queenstown over here, but over that way a little. And the sun will be setting sort of soonish actually. 8 p.m. is when the sunset's gonna happen. We're gonna sit up here until then. Hell yeah, this is my last stream from Queenstown, New Zealand. Um, damn. I'm the same as you planned for six months here, but just extended the least another six months. I don't want to leave. Oh, wow, dude. You don't want to go home to Auckland. Hendrik, thank you for the ice cream and lemon. My Eunice, wow. Thank you, H-Man. Cheers, dude. Yeah, you don't want to leave, huh? Oh, that's not level now. Is that level? Oh, that's not. Oh, 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 shit. That's level. That's gonna fall. Hold on a second. Let me just get this level. Yeah, I don't really want to leave either, but the idea was to do the six months and I've done that now, so. It's such a rad place. Yeah, it was. You, you saw it. You, and by the way, where we're looking, uh, just, just over the back of that ridge is Moak Lake, or over and down, but, so you know, I, I took you there. You know the spot. I spent maybe this season, I would have been up there maybe seven times I went up and each time was like bike ride. No, that can't be right. Oh no, no, I went up with um, Nina and, and Dylan as well. And I also went up with the bus. Well, we didn't quite get there that time. Yeah, I would have been up there seven times minimum. I love that place, man. What camera are you using these days? That's the GH5, same, same, same streaming camera I've been using from the beginning. Can't live in Auckland anymore. If I leave, it'll be something like you've done in Canada or somewhere. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna split. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. You've got a taste. Fair enough. Let me ask you this, CBJ. When you did that one day and then you you pulled up stumps, um, did your season pass get cancelled immediately? Because I heard, I heard word of a particular staff member who did 11 seasons, 11 seasons with NZ Ski and then quit. And they immediately revoked his date, his uh, season pass. He wanted to go riding and it was canceled. He's like, dude, I worked for you for 11 years, 11 years. And like at that point, there was only a couple more weeks of the season left. And he had to buy a spring pass. So like, that's so lame, hey. Like, Nina never took you paragliding. No, she didn't. Yeah, remember I was talking about that the other week, Hendrik? And yeah, it's, should never have mentioned it. I should never have said anything about it because there it is. Never happened. We'll do it in August. August comes around. Oh, okay, how are you looking? What's the schedule? Oh, we're really busy. How about September? Okay, send a message. How about, oh, okay. Okay, what about, oh, okay, October. I'm out of here. Okay. Nice, the GH5 has serves, serves you well. This is actually the second GH5 I've had. How did the first one get damaged? Oh, I fried it, that's right. My bad. Electrically, I electrically fried my first GH5. But this, this camera for streaming is so good. So good. That wind just picked up again. She. Tell you what I've got to start doing here, folks. Adjusting some exposures. I've got to put a light on soon. Get some foreground light going on here. 
Uh, CBJ, I didn't work there long enough for them to sort the season pass out. Oh, they didn't pay me for that shift or give me... Oh wow, you didn't get paid for that? Huh. Well, that's rotten. Actually, that was the wrong thing to do to change the exposure. I'll put it back to where it was. I think I'm gonna start... Should Hendrik, you're always the good one to ask for this. Should I put a light on now or should I wait a bit? The light does give a little bit of definition, doesn't it? I never signed a contract. I just started the day after I was interviewed and we didn't do any admin. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. So they, they got you with a technicality. Yeah, right. But you, it was enough for you to go, oh, this isn't going to work for me. Was, I got a Fuji point and shoot on the way. Should be interesting. Oh, it was. I was going to ask you. I, um, I put a little, I put a link in my Discord about a guy who made a song from a cat. A cat made a meow noise and he made a song out of it. And I know that you, and, and I think, I think he uses a standalone I know you were talking about buying like a mixing console, not a mixing console, a sampler, which is separated from a computer. It's an Akai MCV or MC1 or something. Um, could you let me know what you got and how's it going? <laughs> How is it? Does it work? Is it good? Because I like the idea of... See, while I've been here in New Zealand, I've had a lot of ideas for music. And I, I've, only, I've been writing them down or making notes of them on my phone, but I haven't done anything. But with a little... And funnily enough, I've got my laptop, but I don't have any, like, instruments or anything. So I'm just wondering, like, whether that standalone device... And I know you were talking about getting one a while ago. There you go, the, a, the Akai MC... MPC-1. Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna take a screenshot of that and look at it later. Well, actually, can you just message me, man? Just, just, just messenger me what you got, and I'll just take a look at it later. It's pretty good. You can use a battery pack to power it. Yeah, okay. Hendrik, wait a little longer till the sun is below the mountain. You're trying to overpower the background. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to overpower it. How's the dynamic range, though? Am I, am I completely black? I can't tell on my iPhone 7 screen. Yeah, no props. Thanks, thanks, Was. Yeah, cheers. Because I, I saw this video and I was like, oh, that's the same device, I think, that Was has, or that you were going to get, but you did end up getting it. Yeah, cool, cool. Because I'm going to buy a keyboard anyway, like a little MIDI keyboard, and I figure if I get a 16-pad keyboard, I might as well get, like, a, a pad controller and all that other crap with it, right? Like, why, why just buy a little... A keyboard and that's it why not get everything that works and then you've got MIDI out and MIDI in anyway and you can control it from if you wanted to plug it into logic or whatever one thing I haven't had in like yeah, I haven't owned one in like, well, since the early 2000s. I haven't had a MIDI keyboard. I sold my, I had a big 61 key, 64 keys? What's a full piano? 64? I had a big one, like a full MIDI, had to have a stand and everything. And when I got rid of it, I'm like, I'm never getting a full size. Like, all you need is two octaves. That's it. You don't need anything more. As long as you've got two octaves, you can play bass and treble. You're good. You don't need to have all these keys up. You can just change the, the pitch. So I'm going to get one that's got two octaves, I think it's 16 keys, and I might as well at that point get a touchpad that I can trigger off samples and stuff. Can still see your face, did you bring your reflector? I did bring the reflector, Hendrik, good call dude! Good call my man! You little freaking legend! I fucking totally forgot about this dude. Yeah, we did have an issue with this last time, though. First issue is this comes with a little case that you got to put away. The issue was, how do I hold it there? Do I just put it? Do I just hold it like this in my hand? It's like now you now you got light. Now now you light me. Now you see me. 
Uh, depends what you want to plug in. Have you heard of Teenage Engineering? They make some cool gear. I have not heard of Teenage Engineering. Teenage Fan Club, yes. A Scottish band. I don't know if this is going to overpower the sun, but... And either way, that's... Okay, so that's... Right there, that's maximum lightage on my face. But that means I've got to hold a reflector in front of me. Where's my assistant? Can I get my streaming assistant here to reflect light into my face? I'm not gonna, I'm not, this is the reason I don't do this. I've got one of their synthetics, the OP1. Can you link that for me as well? By the way, should I go golden? Golden light. I mean, this, this does give off light, but it's annoying to hold it, right? It's like I'm holding a book in something in front of me. And I also want to hold my drink. You see the bind I'm in? It's a tricky situation. Six PM. You need this out of the way, right? And but but if it's over here, actually over there. Oh wait a second. Okay, hold on a second. As long as it doesn't get windy. Nah, it's not gonna work, dude. I never bought a little tripod to hold it. Nah, and the, the, the light just changes all the time. You need, you, the, only, the, the only good thing with the reflector is an assistant to, to position it. Might work with a thumbnail though. The wind just died off again. There's still enough snow behind me to, um, for me to want to kill it. In this, in the hill behind me, there's like little patches of snow and I've been purposely going in and peeing on each of them. I don't know why. I'm a little crazy like that. I guess what I'm getting at is I've got to take a slash. So I'm going to go and take a slash and you can enjoy this lovely vista. Maybe that'll be my thumbnail too. When I come back, I'll get a screenshot of, a screen grab of that. But Watch out for that Peter guy. You know, he keeps coming in and stay on the thunder. Wow, this afternoon light is looking amazing right now. 
That's a shot and a half. Beautiful. Yeah, the light looks so nice right now. It's very beautiful. I'm gonna prepare for adding light to the situation. Even though the H-man told us not to yet, I will get it ready. Get it ready for lightage. So that when it comes time, I can just turn it on. The best thing about this is that it's like a reflector, but I can direct it. So I'll just plug it in. There'll be a little bit of wobblage. A little bit of wobblage here on the screen while I screw this sucker into my small rig GH5 cage. Where is it? Give me some wobble. Apologies for the wobble. Sun's almost behind the mountain, yeah! That's gonna be the time when we turn the light on, right? When the sun dips behind that mountain. That's Ben Lomond. Ben Lomond. I gotta get up. Get up. Get up to it. All right, so whenever you think H-Man, we'll be able to turn that on. We don't need it yet though. Are we still level? Oh, we're level. Oh yeah, we're good. Should I try putting the light on now so that we get a little bit of facial... Because the sun, it's almost behind that mountain anyway. We could get a nice, you know what, if I turn it on now, we could get a nice little star... What am I trying to say? Oh, there, won't be much, there won't be much help from that, but I feel like if I block the sun just with my head on this slight angel, and there's a little bit of definition here, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. The battery's gonna last long enough anyway. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a falcon right above us. White falcon. Can you see that? It's going to fly into the sun. Icarus, don't fly too high to kiss the sun. Flying straight into the sunlight. I don't know if you saw that. So give me some, uh, give me some topics to discussion, folks. Oh, I want to talk to you. What do you got? What do you got for me? Let's have a chat. Don't make me do it. Don't make me be the one to bring the conversation every time. What do you got? What do you want to talk about? What's on your mind? What do you know? What do you see? What do you do? Who do you know? Who do you see? Oh, hang on, we're not, 
My phone's not getting charged. Wait a second. Oh shit, I gotta plug that in. My bad. Oh, uh, do I need to? 78%. Uh, we'll let this roll a bit. I'll let that roll down a bit. We good. I'll just drop, drop the, the brightness on my screen. That'll do. The sun is a bit too far away for the bird to fly into it. Come on, man. A little, little, live a little bit. Live in the fantasy world. I want to see that bird touch the sky. Need to get a real powerful LED light. How powerful can you get? From whence did you... Huh. That's strange. Sun goes down. CBJ, what's your plans after leaving Queenstown? What was the six months here a random thing you decided to do or travel a lot? Uh, this, by the way, that's too dark for me to see. I'm gonna turn that back up. Um, so this was just a pretty off the, kind of like, pretty off the cuff kind of decision. Like off, the, what's the saying? Spur of the moment decision. I, um, see I was watching, I was watching old videos of Queenstown. I was digitizing them. Uh, for my YouTube channel, for by From the Vault Friday segment, funnily enough, we talked about it earlier, um, and I came across all the Queenstown footage, and I was like, oh, one day I got to go back to Queenstown, and I just got curious and like was just searching up like what would be the best jobs to have. Like I, you know, I could work in a restaurant again, or I could work on the mountain, and I was just thought, oh, I'll go and have a look at nzski.com, see what they're looking at. You know, what are the jobs and whatever, and. Um, Um, one of the so I went on the NZ Ski web, website and they were looking they had job applications open right now transport division uh, bus driver shuttle driver I was like oh okay well I don't have a class 2 license but I have a class 1 license so I can drive the shuttles shuttle service okay cool you know I'm, I'll make an inquiry just out of curiosity and I got in the conversation with the uh, manager transport division and um had an interview just a conversation like a chat like a Skype call and before I knew what was happening he'd offered me a job and it all it all happened like under a week it was like from from actually thinking about man I should go back to New Zealand you know I want to I want to go back there and live from that point to getting the job was under a week so then I was like oh okay I guess I'm guess I'm going to New Zealand um, so what are the plans after? So I'll be going back home, back to uh, Colborough Beach, New South Wales, South Coast. And it sounds crazy, but I'll be going back to what I was doing before, which is creating content uh, as my only source of income. So whether that be live streams or uh, pre-recorded videos, um, surfing content, lots of surfing. The hell was that? That was weird. My bottle just contracted like it does when you're on an airplane and it gets, watch this. That's weird, hey. Did we just get a change in pressure up here? Barometric pressure? Oh, is there a sketchy weather coming? Shit. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll be doing. I think we're getting too dark there, uh, H-Man. Let's crank up the ISO. Some photographers call it ISO. I don't. Is a wave a day on the cards? So, yes and no. I probably will do it. I probably will do a wave a day. Um, the reason I'm hesitant is because it does take a lot of effort and to be frank, the reward isn't there in, in terms of the views. The only way, and 
maybe I should talk to Danny about this, but the only way I could make a wave a day uh, rank in terms of views is to include GoPro in every single video. Like just, just use GoPro. And I'd, by the way, I have to get a GoPro 11, right? I'd have to put somehow tie in the GoPro Hero 11 to every single video I put out for a wave a day. Actually, that'd be a pro probably a pretty smart move. Like buy, I mean, I don't have the money to buy two Hero 11s, but somehow buy two Hero 11s and then do 30 days of videos with every single video title includes GoPro Hero 11. But I'm definitely, I'm definitely surfing, like there's definitely going to be surfing content, but whether it becomes um, the every day a wave a day, no matter what the conditions, I don't know, like... Uh, speaking of GoPro, what are your thoughts on the 11? The 11 looks rad, right? A larger sensor. We've, I've, I'm not trying to like rain on Danny's parade, but that's what I was saying all the time. A larger sensor, a better bit rate. This camera starts looking really good. Low light becomes no problem. This is good. Now I've not used one. I don't have one. Um, aside from the larger sensor, and I'm assuming a better bit rate. I haven't checked the stats, but I'm assuming a better bit rate. That thing's pretty much the same as the Hero 10s and the Hero 9. Uh, good on you, man. Do you make enough from content? I decided to not focus about work money and just do what I need to do. So I have uh, another, I have an investment property in Adelaide. So I did buy a house when I was over there and add that to what else I do and I do get by. I do get by. Um, yeah. But that does lead into the cryptocurrency conversation, which we probably won't have too deep now, but I will have later when we get back to Australia. But I have enjoyed the extra income while I've been here working. I have enjoyed having this extra play money to then invest in some cryptocurrency projects. That's all obviously gonna to come to a stop when I get back to Australia, unless I do want to go and get a full-time job which i don't want to do in the sense that i know i can s survive with content creation but the extra bonus of having um, an extra income on top to play around with has been fun has been good And that, I know, I know, i'm i'm coming from a, a privileged point right not everyone has that luxury and I mean, I have, I have worked hard to get the house in Adelaide. I have worked hard to, to achieve these goals. I'm not saying this comes, this should come to everybody. I'm not saying that, but. The other thing would be to make a viral video. I could talk, I could look at some tips on how to go viral, you know, like work it out, like shoot a viral video and just literally just cash in on YouTube. But there goes your integrity, right? There goes integrity. Pah. That one had um, pah. something on top of it, like either ash or something. Hey, Ashley, come over here. I'll tell you what I do know though, and, and I'm having another Cody, we've got two more. Um, I know for a fact that I'll continue to do what makes me happy. Now whether that makes YouTube happy, or whether the algorithm works, and whether I earn a lot of money from it, it's almost at this point, it's almost irrelevant. I'll do what I like to do, and if the money comes in addition to that, then great, if not, so be it. Ashley. Yeah. That's the way I've always looked at it, right? Like I've always thought, and I've always said, and you, you can, you guys know from the regulars here, I got lucky with that snorkel video. Let's be clear. If I didn't have that snorkel video, dude, this is now compacting again. That's weird, hey? The barometric pressure must be completely gone haywire. If I didn't have the um, 
that viral video on YouTube, my channel would be a nothing channel, right? There'd be, it only, and by the way, my channel only looks good because of that viral video. The numbers don't, the numbers don't add up on my channel. The view counts, the comments, the, the, um, so the veracity with which I upload content to the towards the viewers, the view numbers and the subscriber count, these don't, the, the math is all out of whack. Uh, CBJ, staying on top of the algorithm is a full-time job. Making content and uploading consistently is tough. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm basically, I've, I never, I've never been on top of the algorithm. I've never been able to understand what it is. Yet, if you look at my channel, go to my YouTube channel and have a look. I got a viral video and I don't, I don't know how or why. And I've tried to replicate it with other videos and they haven't succeeded. So I'm not on top of anything. And it's, it's more a, it's a confusion why that even happened. Like, why did one of my videos go haywire and give me a, a, f a lot of money, right? Why did that happen? I don't know. Sookie's in the house. G'day, Sookie. How you doing? Good to see you, Sookie. What a lovely vista this is, huh? Photographic minds. Yeah. This is um, something that I didn't... I never started my YouTube channel to go viral. I never started my YouTube channel to be a snorkel mask reviewer. This just came handed to me. It, and to be frank, it could have been anything. It could have been, have a look at these oven mitts that I've bought. These oven mitts are strange. They, they get cold, but yet they're warm. Why is that the case? And I make a video and suddenly YouTube goes, there you go, dude. Have 20 grand and 20,000 subs and two million views, there you go. And that's all we're gonna give you. Thanks very much. That could have been, it could have, I don't understand it. And I, I don't think there's any point trying to understand it because there's nothing, there's nothing you can do. This is my hot take. There's nothing a creator can do to satisfy their own you can't be yourself and play the algorithm. So the, the slogan of YouTube, broadcast yourself, broadcast you, you can't do that if you want the algorithm to work for you because you have to do what the algorithm and YouTube tell you to do, such as the stupid thumbnails, the oh my God thumbnails, the titles with gone crazy, gone wild, you'll never guess what happens. All this crap, right? The don't forget to smash the like, subscribe, tinkle on the bell, all that shit. I guarantee no one that started YouTube had that in their, in their plan to do all that crap, but they're, they're, there they are. Don't forget, hi guys, if you like the content, uh, share this with all your friends, make sure you get notifications, don't forget to turn that bell on so that you get notified whenever I go live, and uh, like, share and subscribe. All that crap is the uh, YouTube's additional uh, instructions on what you need to do, but then, then you're not being you. You're being a YouTuber. I don't want that. I want to be me. And if by being me, I get bonus payments or uh, following, then that's, that's all I'm after. I don't want to go and vi uh, shoot a video in a suicide forest to get views. I'm not, I'm, not interested in that at all. Always want to do me. I want to broadcast me. I want to be me on YouTube. And YouTube aren't inclusive enough, <laughs> funnily enough to use their own terms, they're not inclusive enough to promote you. They want you to do all those things that make a YouTuber. And that's shit. You make slow, long-form content and maybe the watch time is low. Algorithm favors quick cuts, attention-grabbing stuff, watch time. Yeah, that's exactly it. I don't care for that. I do not care. That's like the theater saying, you have to give us this film, otherwise we're not going to play it. That's fucked. The producer and the, and the 
director of photography makes a film and says, play this in your theater. I'll bring an audience. The theater doesn't say you have to do, you have to make this kind of film. That's garbage. Like it's so backwards. Uh, go snowboarding wearing oven mitts, instant virality. Right. In, <laughs> right. And CBJ, I'll give you a quick example, and, and my regulars will know this. As soon as I start saying it, they'll know this. They'll be bored with this, so I won't do it too long, but... Okay. Go, go to my YouTube channel. Or go to YouTube. Just don't, don't go to Gives A Minute. Just go to YouTube and search Jack Daniels, the beverage. Just search Jack Daniels. Scroll down and tell me when you see one of my videos. I've got a spoiler alert for you. You'll be scrolling for days till you see one of my videos. What do you see up front? You see Shoe Nice, a YouTuber by the name of Shoe Nice. What is he doing? Necking an entire liter bottle of Jack Daniels in one go. This content is favored over my content. Now, Again, I'm not trying to say I'm the better creator or I'm, I deserve views or I'm better at this or that. I'm just saying, I make Jack Daniels reviews. I've reviewed like hundreds of their products and I've gone out into like scenic areas and sat down and did comparisons to Chinese Jack Daniels versus Australian Jack Daniels. This percentage versus how much this, I've done all the detailed Comp price comparisons for different countries and where you are, all that stuff. And that just gets down promoted heavily over one dude getting a bottle and just going all the way down. Millions of views and monetized. So is YouTube telling me as a creator, if you want your Jack Daniels videos to get promoted, you have to drink a bottle in one go and only then well, we promote your content. That's the message that they're giving. That's that's the that's what they're saying, in, inadvertently. So, do I want to do that? Hell no. Like that's so dangerous, right? It's it's bad for your health. It's a waste of a good product, and it's dangerous, and it sends a terrible message to kids to go and get fucking hammered on Jack Daniels. Yet they're the top ranking videos. So what the fuck? Like, and, and it used to get me, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm seven years into my YouTube career, and I just, I just don't care now. I'm just, I'm just through with even trying to like, I mean, go and search. <laughs> so, two words, nude yoga. Just search it up on YouTube, nude yoga. I mean, if you want to get off, go on. To... How the fuck does nude yoga get monetized on YouTube and promoted over my content? Doesn't make any sense. Nude yoga. Look at it. You don't even have to have like a, an adult. Just go to YouTube.com and search nude yoga and scroll down. You're going to see Vaj right there. Like, and this gets promoted. Look at the view counts. Fucking hell, man. Try to work out that algorithm, there's no working that shit out. I haven't been on YouTube for months now. Suki, okay. Uh, can it go viral, get popular by jumping on trends, doing what algorithm wants, but then the channel is content you don't enjoy. So pointless. This is exactly what I don't want to do. Like, I, I do not want to jump on these trends just for the sake of getting the views. Like, fuck no. That's... So not what I'm into. Nude Yoda or that too. You could search for Nude Yoda. I remember when um, uh, was if you're still in the house, you'll remember uh, Fab Trav. So Fabian Dorig, he's a uh, skateboarder from Switzerland. Um, he did come out to Australia and hang out with another YouTuber, uh, an old friend of mine, and uh, we got. We got to know each other through skateboarding and, and this and YouTube, and whatever. He told me you because he was at a, his channel at that time was about 20,000 subs, 25,000, I think. And he was saying, you have to just do what the big YouTubers do. 
So he he made a whole bunch of fucking fidget spinner shit. Like, God, it was stupid. Like, just thinking back to it, it's fucking stupid. But he made all these fidget spinner videos, like a hundred fidget spinners spinning at the same time. Like, get the fuck. Is that really what you want to do? Like, do you, like, really? You bought a video camera to spin fidget spinners? Get the fuck. And he's told me, just whatever Logan Paul and Jake Paul do, you should do. And I fell for it. And you can search my channel. I made a video called, um, uh, either, can you, can you make peanut, um, can you make jam out of popcorn? Can you make jelly out of popcorn? Can you make jam? Can you make popcorn jam? So, just search on my channel for popcorn jelly or jam or something. And that was a direct answer to Fabian Fabtrav saying to me, if you want to get views, you have to take a spin on whatever the big YouTubers in that time it was Logan Paul and Jake Paul, whatever they're doing, you have to do to get those views. So Jake Paul had done, made a video about, I think, I think it was even the same title. Can you make jam out of was it can you make jelly can you make jam out of peanut out of popcorn can you make jam from popcorn I think that was the exact title so I copied it I literally copied it and did it and I felt so stupid like and it wasn't me I only did it because Fab Trav told me to and by the way it didn't work but that's aside from the point but it was so stupid to even do it That's it. I just never, never, that's not it. I'm not doing that shit. Um, crazy dude. Yeah, you remember him was, yeah. Of course, it's great to get popular and make dollars, but having a small audience you can chat with is great too, so you're doing well. Man, this is true. Like, having a smaller, tight-knit community is much better in that, in that regard, to have that, for sure. For sure. I liked your How to Make Bailey's video. That was cool. And Hendrik, you know what that was? That was an answer to a, a Beakazor? Was it Beakazor or was it, what's that? what was the guy from Alaska? Not Baked Alaska, I'm not thinking about Baked Alaska, I'm thinking about, there's a YouTuber that used to watch my content from Alaska and he told me, or, or, or him or Beakazor said, you can make Baileys from these ingredients and I was like, oh, I'll do that man, I'll make, I'll make that, hey. Like that, that's not me chasing a trend or anything, that's me Oh, you can make homemade Baileys? Let's try it. YouTube pushing their shorts. It'll all be revenue split between the long form shorts. So you could try shorts along with long form content. I've got a short. I've got one on my channel. It's actually pretty cool. Go and have a look at it. It's down the bottom. Go to my channel. Go all the way at the bottom to the short section. There's a great short. My niece and nephew smacked the butterfly out of the sky with a stick and clean killed it. And... 200 views <laughs> like one in a one in a million chances of whacking a butterfly my niece when my nephew hits the butterfly my niece says you killed my happiness oh no she put it on screen you killed my happiness yeah I, I said can I have that video and I'm gonna put it on my channel and see what happens and nothing happened I'll tell you what's gonna happen now though I'm gonna take another slash and we are getting close to sunset that sky's gonna go pink and purple and all kinds of colors. I'll be back.
While I was down there slashing, I looked up and saw my camera and the position this is in, it's, it's gonna make a great photo. So I'm gonna just go down and uh, take a photo. Back in a sec. And this angel. Yeah, that's looking good up there. That photo, I'll put it in the Discord later on. Oh, I could put it in the Discord now, actually. Let me do that. Um, if you were not in my Discord, go to my Discord and I'll post this photo. Um, gives a minute related. Select more photos. Check this out. Um, done. Post photo. I just put this in the um, gives a minute related discord. Shorts suck in my humble opinion, Hendrik. It's really turning me off YouTube, really, shorts. Tuneses. They're also making it so smaller channels can make it with shorts and not get pushed out by the big channels competing with TikTok. Interesting. If your shorts get watched, get popular with shorts, your long form content is then promoted to those viewers. I mean, that's interesting. That's a good way of doing it for sure. How can I cash in on that? That's what I would have said in the old days, but I, I don't care, dude. Sad as that sounds, that I just I've given up. Let's make sure my phone's getting a charge here. Yes, it is. And now it's getting so cold that I've got to think about closing my bag up, my backpack, to keep the warmth in, because batteries last longer when they're warm. Dude, it, is, it has gotten cold. Whee! It's almost time. No, I already cracked it. I was gonna say it's almost time for another Cody. I've already cracked it. So we talked about YouTube, we've talked about Queenstown, New Zealand. What else can we talk about? I like a good conversation. Oh, by the way, how far are we? Oh no, okay, so we've got another hour or so, but at some point, the battery will go flat for the GH5. I've got a spare, so I'll swap it out. But if it just turns off, just the stream will still be there, but it'll just have to put the new battery in. Might have to turn the light on. The light's already been on, Hendrik. The light's been on the whole time, dude. What's going on with that? It's not working? Shit. The light's been on the whole time, dude. I see it's pretty dark there, though. We haven't talked about DLive yet. Ah. Um. I'm not going to. Because... I got a strike. I'm not talking about DLive. I'm not on the Discord. I've been banned from the Discord and I got a strike. So I'm not talking about DLive. Until I work out or, re or until someone answers a ticket that I did submit three times now, I'm not talking about it. I must be the only verified partner that doesn't have access to the Discord though. That's sort of strange because that's part of the requirements or part of the uh, benefits. 
but yeah, I'm not going to talk about it until until it's made made clear to me what it is, like what happened. And also, in addition to that, I don't know what to talk about because I don't see anything because I'm not in the Discord. So in one in one way, it's kind of cool that I'm just I'm a I'm a silent partner because I don't know anything now. But that's no different to whatever. But yeah, why is that so? Why is that so? Um, light's so underpowered at the moment. It's pointing at my face. I guess there's still enough daylight, ambient light around. Jeez Louise, yeah, yeah. I got a strike. I'm struck. I've been sunder struck. I got a strike for, what was the wording? Um, something like, um, a, a, bad bad social media or something like being a poor prom, poor bad promoting or something bad bad vibes or something I mean I do the best I can to bring as many I just brought a person to DLive right now like I, I bring actually the last say five or six streams I've done from New Zealand I brought new crew to DLive so I don't know anybody else who's using Restream to bring in other, other people to the platform, but I'm doing it, and I have been doing it. Akadaka? Not sure what Akadaka's in relation to. <clears throat> but either way, um, it is interesting to to be in the position where I am partnered. I'm a verified partner. I don't have the benefits of other partners and I've been given a strike for which I haven't been told what it actually is for. I've asked, I've ticketed it three times and I've asked in the DMs to staff, all of which have gone unanswered. So, if anything, what that tells me is now it's going to be a case of, all right, let's just not talk about it. Let's just stream. I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything to discuss because I don't see anything because I'm not in the Discord. So, aside from there was that little, that little button that comes up. It says if your stream is stuck, ignore it or something. I, I saw that today. My stream's not stuck, but it says if your stream. Oh man, that's really dark, isn't it? Let me just, um, every time we drop it lower. Oh, Thunderstruck, Akadaka, I gotcha, I gotcha. Is that too bright behind? That's uh, IS, uh, shutter speed of Hundi, and then we'll ramp ISO late, leaders. We'll get a little bit more daylight behind us there. Thunderstruck. Yeah. So the sky's too bright now, isn't it? Way too bright, dude. Go back. Go back. What are you doing? Go back to about there. Don't need to see me that bright. Yeah. Ooh, wee. So what else can we talk about? Aside from that, I want to talk about something. To be honest, I would have liked that's better. Yeah, betterer. Thanks, Hendrik. Yeah, I would have liked this stream to be warmer. I would have. I would have hoped. <laughs> you can't have it both ways, though, because I wanted it cold for the snow, but I wanted this stream to be a spring stream where I could sit up here in a t-shirt. 
Because it has been a few days where it's been like, oh shit, man, it's, it's spring, hey? It's like 22 degrees, 21 degrees, and the sun's out, it's warm. I was hoping for that for this stream, but it's cold now, like, I can feel it. Like, this is, as, this, well, this is not as cold, but this is up there with the coldness of the other streams that we've done. Then again, in a couple, uh, well, this is the last Saturday I'm having in New Zealand. This time next week I'll be at home. Shit, man. Oh, Hendrik, I can't wait to do a, a Crookhaven head stream. I don't know why that, that, that bench has just got me, hey? That one bench where we sat, we're drinking that wine that time. I want to do a, I just want to go there and stream from there, like I am now. And I will. Yeah. And you know what I'll do when I'm there? I'll be talking to you and I'll be saying, dude, I really want to be on Queenstown Hill right now. Remember that day when there was the, the bushfire and it got windy and then it stopped? I want to be up there. So basically what I want is what I haven't got. You always want that though. That's called life, isn't it? Just be happy with what you've got, man. That's actually a good point. Like, how can you, how do you do that? How do you be happy with what you have? How do you live in the moment, I guess, is the more of the, the question. How do you, how you, can you, how can you maintain happiness? It's a taunt, isn't it? Because something better is always around the corner. It's a big old tease. Crookies rocks, I need to make my way down your way. Man, anytime Hendrik, you're always welcome, man. You're always welcome. Just get that, get your feet sorted first. I, I mean, can there, is there a fix? Is there a cure? For this, is there a remedy? Like, you know, like with me, with my prostate, not, not trying to take it away and make it about me, but in comparison, like I deal with like lousy sleep and peeing three times every four hours or whatever because of my prostate, but I know that there is a fix for it. With your situation, is there a fix? Like, is there something that can be done for it? Like, because mobility is... You know, like, your your physical ability to move and go about your day from A to B and C to D and ideally E to F as well, uh, that's important, right? So is there a way that, or is there a, a something out there that has an, a, a fix for this? No one comes up here in the evening. It's all just, it's day traffic. I like it up here in the, the late evening. Sun is going down. Uh, it's very rare. Royal Melbourne Hospital fixed it, but they lasted only about four, six months. Okay. So, so you did get treated for it, and it was fixed. So, obviously, the next question is, can you go and get re refixed, like retreated? Yeah. Does it have a name? Does it have a, a, a diagnosed name?
Uh, it's called lipodermatosclerosis. Jesus, Hendrik. I mean, I did ask, so I guess I got what I asked for. Um, okay. I mean, sounds scientific. Uh, CBJ, curious how you dealt with getting accommodation here in Queenstown. Found a room somewhere. Just, how was that experience? Man, good question, dude. Good question. So, once I'd got the job offer, the very next thing I did was, uh, and by the way, my my uh, team leader or head of department was there was resources. So he said, "Oh, you got to add add yourself to this Facebook group, join that group, and keep checking here." And so all these face basically it was through Facebook. So Facebook was like, as much as I don't like Facebook. Um, by the way, add me if you want. Benon is my name. You can find me. Just search B-E-N-O-N. -N. I'll, I'll accept friends. Um, Facebook to me is like hit and miss. Certain things like Marketplace is absolutely incredible on, on Facebook. Um, and these groups, in this case, to try to find a combination, like there's no other way you could do it, right? It's a godsend. Um, so I went ahead and sort of put out an, an ad of my own, what I'm looking for. Now I was very specific because I've lived in this town before and because I knew, so in my job, I had to be at the yard every morning to pick up the bus. And the yard is on the corner of Sawmill Road and Gorge Road. So, and I'm, I'm aware of like, I lived on Huff Street before. I, I know that Warren Park is between Huff Street and uh, Gorge Road. And all I gotta do is walk across that park and I'm basically at the yard. So I was looking for a place either on Huff Street or Friar Street, or even maybe Robbins Road, a little further away, Hilton. But I looked and I looked and I looked and I put my ad up and nobody answered it. And so I just kept looking and, and maybe about once every four or five days, someone would put up a place, uh, need a uh, housemate needed Huff Street. And I'm like, yes. And I'd answer those ads with a vengeance. Like I was like, I, I, I know the town. I don't even need to see the house. I know the town. I need to live on, on that street or in that area. I can give you money now to secure the room. I'm going to be here from this date till this date. I've got a job already. Um, I'm good. And all of them fell through. Like nothing, like nobody, one, okay, one girl, turned out to be a scammer she had two places that i think they were both scams she's the only one that actually had a chat with me like multiple conversations and i thought this is on that was on um uh um what's the street coming off gorge road on the left across from fresh choice heading uh south um i walked up it to come up here uh doesn't matter. Starts with an H. Like, that, that, that doesn't matter. Anyway, that was a scam. Then I actually found a place that I was so close to putting a deposit down. And the dude literally sent me, and I sent it to Hendrik and Charlotte for giggles. So you can verify this, Hendrik and Charlotte, if you're still in the chat. Um, sent me a bond form to sign and deposit money. And I shit you not, they'd removed the dollar amounts off the form and they had a they had a spot for me to sign but they'd taken away the dollar amount i'm like you want me to sign a a bond form for an undisclosed amount of money like i'm i'm like I'm not doing that like if you send me the form again with the money the 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 dollar figure i'll sign it i'll sign that for you but this one here you've removed the dollar amount He's like, oh yeah, I'll be able to get that. Oh, no worries from the real estate. And I'm like, yeah, cool, get it from the real estate. No worries, I'll speak to you when you get it from the real estate. And he never did. And then about, it's about a week and a half later, he has the fucking gall to email me and say, oh, hey man, I'm just wondering how you've gone with that bond form. I'm like, dude, when you never sent me the one from the real estate, I assumed you were a scam. And I got myself another place. And that's when I had already found another spot anyway, but so bad, hey, like, so sketchy, man, like, 
Imagine sending money over the internet for a house that you're not in the same town. Like I, I hadn't arrived yet, so I was doing it all from Australia. And the form looks legitimate, but there's no dollar amount to it. So when I go to claim my bond back, what am I claiming? I'm claiming nothing because there's no amount there. Uh. Verified, Hendrik. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. So I sent it to Hendrik and Charlotte just to sort of show them. Hamilton, not Ham. Hamilton Road, not Hamilton Road. No. What's the street name? I can't. I'm thinking about it too much, and I won't be able to get it. But, but either way, then I found a place on Half Street, and it was absolutely what I needed. Like. And it was a bonus. It had an ensuite. I did. I don't need an ensuite. I'll I'll share a bathroom. I don't care. But this one had an ensuite. It was two fifty, which is in my price range. Two fifty plus plus uh, bills. I'm like, yeah. And I saw uh, the ad. I responded. I said, hey man, I'll I will give you a month's rent today if you can give me the room. And he's like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'm, I work hospo. He works at Kingpin. The, the guy who put the ad, he worked at Kingpin at the time. Chef uh, said, oh, when I get home from work, I'll, I'll have a chat with you. And we had a Skype chat. Really nice dude. Really sweet guy. He's like, man, you sound, you sound good. I'll just run it by my housemates and then I'll get back to you in the morning. He did. He ran it by his housemates. They're like, yeah, man, this guy sounds cool. And then he called me back and said, you, welcome to the house, man. You're, you're, you're in. I paid him up. I couldn't. Something happened. Uh, I was close to the end of the month. So I mentioned before I have an investment property in Adelaide. I was waiting on that payment to come through to pay him. And it, the way the timing happened, I didn't, I didn't think I'd get the room straight away. So when I said, I'll pay you immediately, I actually meant in my head, I was like, yeah, but he'll obviously take three or four days to work it out. He didn't, he came back the next day and said, you're in. I was like, oh, okay. I don't have the money just yet. And I felt really guilty, but I knew that as soon as the end of the month came, I was good. But, and anyway, um, long story short, uh, these dudes turned out to be so cool, like super nice people. They even picked me up from the fucking airport. Can you imagine? Like I was already prepared to get a, a bus or I actually had another plan to do something else, but they're like, no, nah, man, we'll come and pick you up. We'll pick you up from the airport. And so I get picked up by my housemates that I've never met before. I've only seen one of them in a Skype interview. And they come to the, out of their day, they go to the airport to pick me up. So nice. And yeah, they've been on stream a few times, you know. Yeah. Just really, I couldn't, like, they've already got a replacement for my room. But if they didn't, I would have no problem, like, reaching out as far and wide as I possibly can to get someone and I'd have no hesitation in recommending them for the room. Great housemates. And I'm not just saying that because they might be watching as well. Shlok, I know you're watching. Hello. <laughs> he might not be watching. But he works regular hours now. He probably is Saturday. It's, what is it, Saturday? Yeah, he probably is watching. He hates winter though. That's funny, isn't it? Lives in Queenstown, hates winter, doesn't go snowboarding. Escaped most of winter. He went, out, went over to the United Arab Emirates and England and Scotland and Wales. Got away from winter. Came back and it was fucking snowing. I was like, you, you, didn't, you didn't miss it, dude. You came back and he's like, I can't believe it, man. I came back and it's snowing. <laughs> It only snowed in town like maybe, well, I guess it was, there was one, two, I guess there was four individual sort of times when it snowed at lake level. And yeah, I found that interesting that the one of the times that happened was when Shlok was back. It's great to live with good people, plenty of duds out there. Yeah, yeah, I got super lucky. It's tough to find a place here, only going to get harder again too as locals go back to airbnb -ing. Yeah, yeah, man. I heard about that. People living in Airbnbs. I um, my my advice to anybody that wants to get a place in Queenstown for either summer or winter, because they're both kind of highly sought after. Uh, just give yourself a lot of time. 
give yourself more time than you need. So I knew that I was going to arrive here, I think it was May, May 9? No, no, my job started on June 9. I think I got here about May 15 or May, probably, probably May 15. I think it was mid, mid May. And I get, I started looking for accommodation in February. So that's a long time in advance. Um, if you can have money secure, so it's kind of, it's like nothing, 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 everything happens, everything happens because what what will take place is people will advertise. So a house will need a housemate, but they won't need them two months ahead of time. They'll need them in the next two weeks. So as long as you're, as long as you're familiar with the pages and you keep refreshing and you see the common, like you'll start to recognize ads. You'll see ads that pop up all the time. And you're like, Oh, I've seen that one already. That's not for me. So as long as you keep, up to speed with it and you recognize every refresh of the, the Facebook page. Okay. Oh, there's a new one. Oh, okay. What's this? They need someone now. Okay. Not for me. But when you get up to the two or three weeks before you need to be there, in my case, it was like mid May or whatever. That's when they start popping up. Oh, we need someone early May or we need someone in the next two days or they need someone in the next two weeks. That's when you need to have the money ready to be able to say, Dude, I'm not getting there until May 15, but I can pay that first week right now. And if 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 you're cool, and I mean, I I'm up against a hard, like I'm a, I'm an older guy, right? Like my housemates are all young; they're all in the 20s. I'm 40. I turned 47 while I was here. They're all young young crew. Yet they were like, I remember talking to Schlock about this. I said, "How come you picked me? Like as an older dude? They're like, well, we've had young crew in the room, and all they want to do is party." And we all work in hospo, so we need our sleep and we don't want to be in a, we don't want to have, we love, they love a good drink, of course, man. They're all booze hounds, hey. <laughs> they won't let me get away without going out with them. But they don't want to have to deal with like some young dude that's not going to pay rent and treats the place like shit and comes in late and makes heaps of noise. So that's why they were like, you, you seemed legit. And they, and I'll, I'm, I've got a social presence, so like they can check me on YouTube and, can verify me. It sounds like most of Q Queenstown are good people. Eh, I don't know. I, I've, I've heard some disaster stories. I've heard some disaster stories. I won't name names, but I have heard from some of the staff that I worked with. I've heard some pretty sketchy stories. Yeah. I guess it's, it's like anywhere, really. Like, if, if you're... If you're committed to it and you're up front, I mean, don't be a faceless, nameless troll with nothing to, to stand by. If you, It's like swiping on Tinder and you meet a girl who hasn't got a profile picture and you're like, uh, no picture? What's with that? Like, oh, no, I, I, I don't do pictures. It's like, well, I'm not blind. Uh, I'd, if I met you in a bar, I'd be looking at you. So what's the difference? Ah, uh, no, I'm not going to show you my picture. Okay, unmatch. Don't be a faceless, nameless troll. Be up front, be, be straight down the line, and be ready to pay up front for what you need. That's why I said most. Yeah, okay, gotcha, Hendrik, gotcha. Yeah, true. Yeah, true, most. Dude, my stomach is growling. I don't know if you could hear that on, on camera, but my stomach is going off right now. What did I eat? I ate two minute noodles. Had a smoothie and two minute noodles for lunch. I'm trying to run down my um, my pantry, get it all. Oh, I gotta make dinner though. Oh no, I've got stuff. Yeah, um, and on that note too, uh, CBJ, you, just mentioning like getting a house and like getting it all sorted, I will say this, and, and I guess it ties back into our conversation earlier about sort of, it's a bit of a gamble coming here for the season. Like there's a lot of back end preparation to get sorted. And then what I found is the season goes by so quickly. So like you spend a good, you spend February through May 
trying to find accommodation. And you're only going to be there from May through October. So there's a lot of shit to, to handle and to, to... That is the strangest noise bird I've ever heard. That's a plane. Yeah, it's a lot of shit to, to handle just for a short amount of time. And I, re I remember thinking, when it got to my birthday, 29th of August, I was like, oh dude, this is almost over now. I'm out of here in October. September will be like this, and then October and I'm done. And all of that, all that stuff that I did to get there, to get here, it seemed like it was a lot of effort for not a lot of time. I live in Frankton, which I prefer to living a bit more low key. Yeah, interesting. See, I would never, and, and this might suit you better for, for your job, but I would, and you might have a vehicle. I don't have a car. So I, I knew that I'm going to live in Queenstown, in downtown, like in this case, Huff Street. I want to live walking distance from the yard to go and get the bus. Once the job is over, um, I'll use the ore bus, the dollar ore bus, that's so cheap. And I've got a, my housemate's got a bike that I can ride out to Moak Lake. As long as I can do that shit, I'm just speaking selfishly, that's, that's how I looked at it. But it's not the same for everybody, obviously. Exactly, the move here was more effort than I anticipated. That's another reason I'm staying for summer. I feel like I haven't been here long. Dude, and I, I can feel that, I, I feel that. And I agree with that. Like it, it, you get more, you will get more out of it by staying for, for both seasons, for uh, summer and winter, winter and summer, for sure. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks that too, yeah. And with that in mind, I, I probably wouldn't do it again. I've had this question asked, would you come back here? And I, I probably wouldn't do it again for this amount of time. Like if I was to come back here, I'd do it more on a, more of a permanent basis. So I would probably wouldn't live in a share house, probably have my own place. Um, of course, you're gonna pay more for this. Um, but I'd have to approach it differently. Cause like you give up certain things, right? Like I haven't had a desk and a, and a lamp and like just, Third world, uh, first world problems. Like I haven't been able to record music or boohoo. You couldn't make music. Well, I'm not a musician, but I have. Like when I'm, if I was back in Australia and I had a couple of days off and I wasn't doing anything, I'd probably pick up the guitar and try to lay something down. And I just haven't been able to do that. I haven't got my gear, haven't got my setup. So if I was to do it again, I'd want to have all the gear and I'd I'd want to actually live as opposed to being a temporary resident. That's how I feel. Temporary resident. Happy to be that though, because I did willingly choose this. So I'm not, I'm not downplaying it, but I'm just saying how it's felt while doing it. Uh, Julia, thank you Gibbs for sharing Queenstown with us. It's 3 a.m. here. Safe travels. See you when you're back home. Love and God bless. Thank you, Julia. Thank you for being here on the streams that you have. I appreciate you. I thank you and uh, I'll see you on the other side back in Australia. Have a good sleep. 3 a.m. Get those, get those zeezers. Uh, CBJ, if no car and needing to flat the Queenstown is the best, can go with housemates for groceries. I have a car, so Frankton, it's all good. Yeah, even though... Petrol's extremely expensive. If I stay for the winter next season, I'll give Wanaka a go. Oh yeah, good idea. Good idea, dude. Yeah, that's a that's a smart move actually. I would say Wanaka as an Australian, but I know it's Wanaka. Yeah, man. Yeah, Wanaka. For sure. Yeah, I mean you you've done this now, you know what this is like, so pick another town and they're both as rad as each other, like. Yeah, totally. I got one more Cody, and this is, we timed this perfectly. That's awesome light. I'll take another slash. And then we'll crack the last Cody, and then the sunset will say, ta-ta! On my last Saturday in Queenstown. In this case, above Queenstown.
Ooh, that sky looks radicalized. That looks great. Do we have enough light on my... What's going on with my light? It's not... Is it not angled correctly? I feel like that's not giving me enough... Still quite... There's still quite a lot of ambient light. Slash it up. How would you compare the difficulty of moving here to when you moved to Canada? Ooh. Shit. Um, I... <laughs> Can't really, can't really compare the two. My Canadian experience was so different. Yeah, just, I met a girl and moved in with her. So at one point I was backpacking in the Global Village Backpackers on Granville. And the next minute I was living in a f beautiful high rise apartment with a stunning Canadian girl. So I don't really have, um, don't really have, I didn't really have that experience. So I don't really, can't really compare it. Hey, my advice would be to meet a partner straight away. <laughs> I met her the first night I was there too. Literally got off the plane and checked into a hostel and then went out to a gay bar and met this fucking phenomenal girl. So I don't, yeah. I remember the dudes in the hostel were like, what are, you, where, what are you doing, man? Where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, gonna go and um, move into this place with this girl. Although she was actually going back to, she was going to Toronto. That's pretty, that's one thing I didn't ask her when I caught up with her in Poland. Like, she gave me her house pretty quickly without, we didn't really, I guess she just, she just must have trusted me. But yeah, she gave me the keys to her house relatively quickly. Yeah. Interesting. Fair enough, yeah. If you want to see, um, I guess, more to the story, if you want to check... Excuse me while I get the last Cody. If you want to check on my YouTube channel, I can't remember the name of the vlog Oh, now I can. It's, it's called, um, Hadn't Seen Jenny Galt in 16 Years. If you search up those terms on my channel, I don't know if you do it on YouTube, it might come up, but if you go to Gives A Minute and then search within Gives A Minute, Hadn't Seen Jenny Galt for 16 Years, that'll give you a bit more of the backstory there. And I uh, had a dream about her two days ago. What was that dream? That was bizarre. Oh, can't remember what it was, but she was in my dream two days ago. Yeah. Strange. Dude, it just got so cold. And it's not wind cold. Like when I've been cold here today, it's been because the wind's been blowing. It's just the area around me just got cold, like the surrounding air, not moving air, just the air. Shit. Jenny seems cool. Yeah, she, she, yeah, she's definitely, definitely had an impact on me. Let's just say that. Certainly one of those people that everyone's got one in your life where you meet someone and you're not. You're not too sure why you meet them. Why is that so? Oh, you know what I've got to do, dudes? There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, you're not too sure why you meet these people or what the, uh, the importance in your life is. And I'm still not really sure. Like, still don't know what, what the reason there was. But she definitely uh, gave me a... I think... I got inspired by her. That's what it was. It was inspiration. Not that I wanted to be a musician. Not that I gave a shit about whatever she was doing. Like, that, 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 that came out incorrectly. I gave a shit about what she was doing, but I didn't want to do it myself. 
Did I ever tell you, uh, Hendrik, I'm talking to, I guess, here, but and the rest of the chat that has heard the stories, but did you know that we did some work on television show together? There was a, a television show in Canada called... Hallenstein Street. That's the street name for what I was trying to think of before. I told you to come to me if I didn't stop thinking about it. Um, that's not the name of the television show. Oh, fuck. Now what's the name, what's the name of the television show? I had it too. I had it. Oh, my God. I had it. And then Hallenstein came to me. <laughs> See my, how my head works? I've only got space for one thing. I pushed one out and I couldn't get the other one back now. What was it called? It was a community-based television program. We had to go out to um, UBC. So we, she lived downtown corner of Robson and Howe. And we had to go out to UBC. Ah, uh, what was it called? Fuck! I had it too. I was holding it. I was holding on to it. Me and the kids. Me and the kids. Television show called Me and the Kids, and it was like a, it was like a, um, a government, um, it's like an infomercial disguised as a, as a show. So there was like, like, it's like a sitcom, but it was all of the, the, sh the content of the show was like community-based messaging, yeah, wrapped up in a, in a show. And Jenny had, um... So she'd, she'd done work as like, she'd done modeling work. So she'd done some modeling stuff and she had like this, this extras work that she was doing and she had an agent and the agent, what was the, how did I get, I think this, I think that, she was booked to do this show. And when we got there, because I went with her, when we got there, they were like, oh, who's, who's the guy with you? And I, I, I don't even think it was boyfriend. It was like, oh, this is my Australian friend. Um, Yeah, and then some somehow, I can't even remember how, but somehow it was like, oh, we got a role for him as well. And I don't even know if I got paid, but she got paid, but I don't know if I got paid. But either way, we were both in this sitcom, this com this community government-driven sit sitcom thing, me and the kids. Go Google it, see if you can find it, because I've, ne I've never seen the footage. I've never seen it. But yet we were both in on it. And she did... um. She did also either that, it, it can't have been that day, but another time she did a, she was in the background of a photo for some chewing gum or something. So the, the idea was she was sitting on a wharf. I got really, man, my memory shit with this, but she was sitting on a wharf like with the feet in the water or something, and it, and it was like 2.8, like the, the blurriness in the background, she was like, she was like beautiful girl in bikini in background. Cue that shot. Girl in bikini in background, uh, slight bokeh. Out of focus, the, the subject is in foreground and bikini girls in background. And she got like, I think that was like two grand. And I'm like, you got paid two grand to be a blurry bikini girl? She's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get two grand. I'm like, can I get two grand to be a blurry bikini boy? <laughs> I remember being blown away by that. I was like, am I, gonna, am I gonna see you on a bus? Like, if I walk up the street, are you gonna drive past me on a billboard and shit? And she's like, no, no, it's not like that. It's not like that. Like, oh, okay. Then she gets signed to Virgin Records. So it kind of was like that. <laughs> so yeah, she had an impact, that's for certain. Hello Jenny, if you're watching on Facebook. Still have an impact, I dreamt about you two days ago. <laughs> I 
But sometimes in life when you, you come across people like you're not really sure why you, you, you interact with them or you're not really sure what the point of that relationship was or and, and maybe there isn't a point to it at all. Maybe it's just this is what happened. This is how it like some things happen like some things don't happen. That happened. Is there a point to it? Who knows? Does it even matter? Like, do you still... See, that's the other thing. Like, when I caught up with her in Poland, I remember saying to her, you had such an impact on my life, but did I have an impact on your life? And, and before she even answered, I said, and you don't even, you don't have to answer that all that I needed to, and this is a bit selfish for me, but I said all that I needed to do was to let you know that that's the side, like the equation on my side was this way. It might not have been that way for her, and it probably wasn't, because like, realistically, you know, like, she had so much, like, I don't have, I didn't have, and I haven't had much going for me. But she did have, and she has had, and she had had the world going for her, right? That's not, I guess for CBG, I, this is for your sake, she went on to be a, quite a famous musician. Well, she was already was a famous musician, but she went on and, yeah, she did all kinds of stuff, including touring with Perry Farrell in his band Satellite Party including going on the Howard Stern show for that band, including going on Rockstar Supernova. And she, obviously, like, I was a, a blip in her radar, whereas she was my radar for a long time. And I've always tried to work out what the specifics about her, what it was that, that made such an impact. And it's, if you can take away, in my mind, the absolute like attractiveness like she's beautiful right if you can get rid of that because that because like beauty comes at the eye of the beholder right that like you can have a beautiful girl and someone could say she's not that hot man like she's like a four out of ten and i think she's like a 16 out of ten that's just how it is but i thought she was like the most beautiful thing i've ever seen ever still is by the way and she's a full i think she's one year younger than me she's still the most beautiful woman i've ever seen but then you take that away from it and you look and you think, well, what else was it? Like she had all this extra stuff, like all this band stuff and music and she's performing and she was somewhat of a celebrity in Vancouver and she, she was acclaimed and I'm not acclaimed and I've never have been. So why was like, is it just the getting like me getting a slice, like a little taste of that? That's, kind of like it's like you, you're on a boat and you're getting a little bit of the wave coming off the side of the, the boat and, and it, it's still got power behind it it's kind of how I think of it like the, the main part of the wave is the front of the boat where that's that's the boat but then at the back it's kind of drifting off and you're still getting still getting a bit of power at the wave it's kind of how I think about it and yeah it's just an experience that happened it stuck with me my whole life some other things stick with me my whole life too. Um, ISO, shit, my bad. Yes, you're right, Hendrik. I'm too busy. Who got me talking about Jenny Galt? Who did it? Who got me started? Let me just crank the ISO here. You get me started talking about Jenny and, uh, you know, I won't stop. That's way better though, that light. Thank you for reminding me, Hendrik. Dude, that's still got good light there. ISO 800. <clears throat> and we're also at the five hour mark. So the battery may go flat on the GH5. We have a second one. We will put it in. That's too bright on my face still. Yes, very interesting though. As you get older, you kind of look at things a little and you sort of try to study them and 
I don't even know why, like what difference does it make? I don't think about like other girls that I've met and had experiences with the way I do her. Sometimes I remember, <laughs> sometimes I remember past acquaintances and it's like, oh yeah, that happened. Huh. For instance, one time I broke up with a girl in Perth because she had a no fear sticker on a car. That happened. You gave up uh, what was perceivably a pretty good relationship. The nookie was good. She was good. She was cool. But she had a no fear sticker on her car. And to me that was like, ah, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want this, hey. What, bad boy club? I'm out. I don't think about her, aside from now, but I don't think about her. You've been up on that hill for five hours. God damn, I still haven't done that walk. You haven't done this at all? You should have come up, dude. You, you've been on this stream for me for nearly five hours. You could have come up with and hung out, dude. This is my last stream in New Zealand. You've got about 20 minutes to leg it up here from Frankton. Just come over the back, man. Just come up the back way. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, this was always the plan to stay up here till dark though. I, I have a head headlamp to get me back down and everything's gonna be sweet. This is my last stream in New Zealand though. I'm definitely sitting up here until dark. The last Cody, last remaining light. That looks rad though, that sky. Shit, yeah. I do like these conversations though. How did we, oh no, you asked me about Canada, what the experience of getting a house was like, yeah. I couldn't really tell that story without bringing up Jenny. In fact, I can't even talk about Canada without bringing her up. I remember going, so when I first met her, the first night, the next day I was on a bus to Fernie. And so I just met this absolute bombshell. And I, did I, I didn't even tell you how we met. So we go to this, so I'm on the plane. I've just done a 24 hour flight from Australia to S Sydney. What did I do, Sydney? Fuck, I can't even remember. It might've even been a direct flight straight to Vancouver. Nah, it would've been a stop somewhere. Abu Dhabi? It doesn't matter, anyway, long flight. And on the flight, I met another Aussie dude. And we're, ch we're drinking and chatting and I'm like, oh man. He's like, what's your plan for the season? I'm like, I'm going to Fernie. I'm going to Fernie, 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 Fernie. I'm all about it, right? He's like, oh, cool, man. Yeah, I, I'm gonna do something, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting on a Greyhound. I'm going the next day, like, doing it. It's like, yeah, cool. And it's like, we. He goes, you wanna, you wanna share a cab downtown to the hostel? Be cheaper. And I'm like, yeah, definitely, man. So we get off the plane, get in a cab, go down to the hostel, check in. Everything's cool. He's like, oh, you're coming out for a drink? I'm like. Nah, dude, I'm not going out at all. I'm I'm jet lagged as shit. I'm going to bed. I'm going on a I'm on a greyhound tomorrow. I'm done. He's like, Nah, man, you got to come out. It's you're in Vancouver. It's your first night in Canada. You got to come out. I'm like, Dude, I'm a wreck. Hey, like I'm I'm not in any condition to go out. He's like, You're coming out. And he basically dragged me out. We went down to the Camby, which anyone that's been to Vancouver will know the Camby. Drank a few beers. It was awesome. That vibe in that place was so sweet. It was so, maybe it was the jet lag, maybe it was combination, but I was having a great time drinking beers, chatting away with heaps of people coming in, randoms coming in, chatting. Just so good. Then it got to about, probably about 1 a.m. And he's like, we have these crew that had turned up on our table and they were like, oh, we're going to go out because this is a pub and we're going to go out clubbing. And he's like, you got to come, you Aussies, you got to come with us. I'm like, oh, okay, wh where are we going? He's like, we're going to this gay bar. It's like, all right, I'm down, eh? Like, I don't care. Like, nothing against gay people at all. In fact, they're the dudes that know how to party. And all of a sudden, the Greyhound bus and the Fernie trip was the furthest thing from my mind. I'm down to party. I'm in Vancouver. I'm, a, I'm fresh off the boat. Let me party, you know? So we go past the bottle shop 
because it's a bit of a walk to this gay bar. I can't even remember where it was. I'm pretty sure. Was it on? It wasn't even on Granville. It was down. It was between the Canby and back up to Granville. So wherever in those back streets, I can't remember exactly what it was. I used to remember the name of it. Anyway, we went via a, like a, a bottle shop. Well, somehow, somehow we got liquor. And I had a bottle of vodka, which I don't normally drink vodka. I'm more of a whiskey dude, beers, whiskey. But somehow I got given a bottle of vodka. And I had a jacket on like this, because it was winter. And I put the vodka in the jacket here. And it was sitting like, kind of like a bit of a line up my, in, inside that inner pocket and just holding up there. We got, ah, shut up. Not right where I'm telling this story. We go to this bar. We get in, we get into the bar. I, sh I shit you not, this happened within the first two minutes of being in this bar. I'm walking towards the bar from this, the table that we'd sussed out. And I'm walking towards the bar to go and get drinks. To go and get uh, soda, because it's gonna mix the vodka. I'm walking towards the bar, this absolutely smoking hot girl walks, it's almost like out of a film, right? She walks like perpendicular to me, stops, turns, looks at me and says, what have you got up your jacket? And I'm like, what? You can see that? Really? You can really see that? And she's like, What's that? what accent is that? I'm like, oh, I'm an Australian. And I'm, at that point, I'm looking at this girl thinking, dude, this is, this is, in, this is, she's beautiful. Like, what, what? And she's, 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 in, she's, she's asking about my accent. And I'm like, yeah, it's Australian. I just, I just got off the plane like a few hours ago and I'm, I'm fresh in Vancouver and I'm, I'm Ben on, what's your name? She's like, I'm Jenny. And we shook hands and she, and I'm like, oh, now that you know what I got, I'm like, it's, I got a bottle of vodka. Do you want some? She's like, yeah, yeah. So we went and sort of got our own little spot and poured a few drinks. I'm like, I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, these things never last on the time. Like, I could, like, I, I instantly wanted to get out of there. I wanted to, I wanted to get her number and get out of there. I said to her, I'm, f I'm out on a bus tomorrow to Fernie. You seem like a lovely girl. I'd love to have a look around Vancouver in the morning with you. If you're up for a coffee early, I'm not getting on that bus till 3 p.m. I'd love to meet you tomorrow for a coffee. You can take me around and show me this wonderful city, like even just a few, whatever, a few streets or whatever. And she's like, that'd be great. She gets out a business card, writes her name on the back, Jenny Galt, 812-4044. I remember her fucking phone number. I'm oh, shit you not, 812-4044 on the back of her business card for her band. I flipped the card over, I'm like, it says foreplay. I'm like, what's foreplay? And she says, I'm in a band. You're in a band? Really? Okay, um, I'll call you tomorrow. And I just, I, 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 I leg it. I go back to my table, I say to the dudes, or the guy from the plane, I'm like, man, I, I got a number. Um, I'm going home to go to bed. And, and I'm done. He's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going. I want to be fresh in the morning to meet this girl. Because I didn't want to stay there and fuck things up. Because usually you, you party all night and then you never see them again. So I was like, no, I want to see this girl. Let's not forget, at this point, she's like 100 out of 10. We're in a club, it's dark, and it's, she's beautiful. So I go back and uh, go to bed and get up in the morning and... In the back of my mind, I've got my, my bus already booked, right? 3 p.m. And I'm like, it's like, I guess it was like 11.30 or something. And I ring this number, 812-4044. It goes to the message. I'm like, oh, g'day, Jenny. Uh, it's Ben on. You met me last night at bar. I can't remember the name of. Um, just, yeah, I'm still keen to see you. If you want to show me around, I'll, um, I guess I'll call you back in 10, 15. Uh, hope you're feeling okay in the morning. And I hung up and about, I guess I walked up the block a few times to fill the time in, then I called her back. And when I called her back, she answered on the first ring. And I'm like, oh, hey, it's Ben on it. Oh, hey, hey. 
I'm like, oh, good day. And she says, yeah, look, I um, I had to screen your call. I wasn't sure if you were a weirdo or not, but you sound really lovely on the message. I'm like, oh, does this mean you want to see me? You, you. And she's like, yeah, I want to see you. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I'll, where can I go? And she tells me where to meet, and we go and meet, and fell in love pretty much on that on that meeting. I was like, what am I doing? Going to Fernie? This is stupid. Like, got this girl. Like, only only went out for coffee with her, and had fallen so hard for her. Get on this bus. God knows how many hours, 12 hours to Fernie, get down to this place. Me and her are back and forward, back and forward. And we used to use um, the messaging. We were using Napster Messenger at the time. Napster was big. Napster was just beginning. And we were, we were communicating via Napster. And uh, all the while there, I'm waiting. It's funny enough, uh, CBG, CBJ, I'm here in Queenstown. And the, I heard about the season not starting last year and two, three weeks. I'm there in Fernie and I'm looking for a job because I had, I got to Canada with $400 to my name. I get down to Fernie, I've paid for accommodation. I'm like, I'm waiting for this magical snow to fall so I can go get a job. It never happened. Day, day goes by, day goes by, day goes by, day goes by. Four, four days go by. All the while I'm there on this chat with this beautiful girl who's saying, why did you go to Fernie? You should have stayed here with me. I, I don't, I, I miss you. You seem like a great guy. What are you doing? What? And I'm like, what am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? So I went straight back to Vancouver. <laughs> for, for God, everything just bailed and went back to Van and then spent the next six months just head over heels in love with this girl. That's the story. Well, it's not how it ended, but who asked that story? I like telling that story. But who asked it? Yeah. And I guess the point of that was that it meant a lot to me, but did it mean a lot to her? Or what did it mean to her? Probably not as much. Yeah. This is a great story. Napster had a messenger. Yeah, there was, a, there was an instant messaging service. At least you can zoom out and put it in perspective for what it was. Many people can't reflect on things like that. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got, the, um, I got the vibe that, that that kind of gave me this approach to life where it's like, sometimes you meet people for a certain sounds cliched right but that you meet him for a certain reason and the reason isn't clear at the time but it might come clear later or it might not and then you just keep moving through different sort of phases of in, in life you know like and like certain things like even the simplest thing like saying yes to that to this persistent Aussie dude who I don't even know I'd never I'd never got his number I don't know who he was but All right, well, that was the GH5 dying. Uh, let me just expect, expect, let me just exchange the uh, exposure. Yeah, that was the GH5 just uh, dying in its ass. We knew that would happen. It's probably a good time for that to happen because I could talk on and 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 on about Jenny. I'm going to take a quick slash and then when I, when I come back, let's change the subject, hey? Let's change the subject. Let me take a quick slash. Although I do like talking about it. Not much skylight left.
right. Ooh, the sky is so dark. What are we on? ISO 800. I can crank that up to 1600 by now, surely. Let me just do that. ISO 1600. Or should we go all the way to 32? That's 32. That's the maximum ISO and therefore and shutter speed 100. So that's the maximum we can crank this this camera to. If it gets black behind me, that's it's all over at that particular point. Camera died. Yeah, that, I was mid mid ramble. Probably a good time for the camera to die to sort of end that conversation. I do like talking about that, but I also can appreciate that some people might be like, just talking about a past, um, a pre um, what's the, a, a previous conquest? Someone said that to me once before. It's just, you're just ranting about an ex-girlfriend. It, it would be that, let me just drop that down. I can kind of see how that would, it would, it might sound that way. Hold on, that's still too bright. It just drops up. <sighs> Hold on a sec. That's better. I can definitely see how it comes across that way sometime. Um, but the thing is, if I hadn't have seen her, we've we've maintained sort of like a semblance of a friendship since then. You know, odd messages here and there, and this and that. Nothing, nothing too deep. But then w to see her on that tracer tour in 2015 or 16 or whatever it was 16 years later to know that we still we 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 sat and we talked and like it 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 felt like no days had gone by and that's not just a past conquest at that point like if you can still if you can still like none of my other girlfriends from 2000 I don't even know them right like so to have that, she's the only ex-girlfriend that I've still have some kind of communication with. So what is, what's, what's in that? That's got to be something, right? There's got to be some hidden cipher or hidden message. Who knows? Anyway, Queenstown, huh? What a beautiful place. We didn't quite get the pink skies I was hoping for, but far out, that does look good. Scroll up, mate. I had a couple of older comments there. Okay, I didn't see it. Let me scroll up. Um, so Julia thanks gives. Julia's left. Slash it up. Okay, how would you, okay, got that, fair enough. Jenny seems cool, didn't know. You need to be on the mountain, okay, cool. Hendrik, sky does look great. Must have had an impact if she met up with you in Poland years later, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that could have just been curiosity from her, from her sake as well. But I think you'll see, if you watch that video, you'll see, like there, well, I know, I'm not gonna speak on her behalf, but. Maybe not the same sort of impact she had on you, but an other impact nonetheless. It's good. It's good. Good way to see it. Yep. At least you can zoom out and put it in perspective for what it was. Many people can't reflect. I, I think I saw that. That's a great story. I don't know. I got all those comments. I got those comments. Yeah. Yeah. I got all those comments. All good. All good. We have, we have discussed that a few times and like, yeah, it does pop up every now and then. And I mean, th there's the other thing too, like I don't dwell on it, but yet it does pop up in my dreams. Like, why, why do I go to sleep having not thought about that girl for months and then all of a sudden I dream about her? And I'll dream about Vancouver as well. Like I'll dream about the city. So it wasn't just, I mean, it obviously it was her in that city, but the city of Vancouver and her presence when I was there still somehow has some kind of play on me. It's weird. I'd like to talk to someone about that. Like what, like what's the, 
what's the psychology behind that? Like, why, why does... Because, like, it, it could... There could be a bit of a story behind that. If you th- So when my father left Germany, he went to Canada. Now, he didn't go to Vancouver. He went to Toronto. But that's the city that she's from. So Jenny moved from Toronto to Vancouver... I don't know. Is there something in that? Like, why? Like, why does? Why do? And my. And by the way, I guess I should have said this to CBJ, but the reason that we broke up was that I had to leave Canada to come home to Australia because my father, who was very sick with cancer, was very close to dying. And when I announced to Jenny that I've got to go back to Australia. She dumped me, which I don't think I've ever really forgiven her for. Yet I've dumped girls for way less, for a fucking no fear sticker on a car. So who am I to judge? But she dumped me. I got back to Australia. The year was 2001. My father dies. September 11 happens. The world changes. Years go past. Next thing I'm friends with her on MySpace. How's everything been? I never really forgave her for dumping me, but there I am watching her career play out in, in public in front of me. So yeah, what is, what is with that? Like what is with Vancouver and her and my dreams? I don't know. There's gotta be something in that though. Like that's, that's like panning for gold and like you've just let the gold fall out, dude. Pick that back up, do that bit again. <laughs> Pan that bit, man. You've just put that back in the pan. You've got gold there, dude. I don't know, man. Is my DLive not streaming, uh, s- um, refreshing trousers? DLive machine skis? Oh shit, it's almost 9 p.m. I guess it's night dark wasting. Okay, so the chat's now working. It's the same with me, I still talk to Julie here and there. We were together for eight years. I still dream about Germany 40 years later. Right, see, you know it, Hendrik. Was it dumped you or a split due to a long distance wouldn't work for her? No, she, she, and I'll never forget this. She said to me, um, you go, you're going back to Australia. I need to move on with my life. She, she had no, and, and I never expected it, but she had no, and, uh, anticipation. No, it's the wrong word. Um, she had no desire that's also the wrong word she wasn't going to go to australia period like she's not she, her, her career is here her and 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 it was like her career was kicking off like i i never expected her to i wanted her to stay i wanted her to stay in canada and do a thing and i'd be back i'd go home see how dad's doing get the diagnosis and whatever it is and then make a decision and i'd come back but she said, if you leave, we're done. We're, break, we're breaking up. I've got to move on. Yeah, and like I said, I've done that with girls for way less. So I don't have any... I, I, you can't, can't be angry at that. Like, yeah. Definitely can't be angry at that. If, if, like, what kind of a hypocrite would I be if I was to get angry about that? Intention, that's the word. She had no intention. That's the word I was looking for. No intention to go to Australia. Uh, also, a side note, I should mention this. I haven't mentioned it because it's not that relevant. But she had been married previously to an Australian from Brisbane. Now, shit you not. I've never mentioned that before because it's not really relevant. But his name was Luke Beaver. No word of a lie. Luke Beaver. Uh, She felt emotionally removed to it, didn't seem as invested as you thought. 
Yeah, that's I, that's how I'd see it too. Yeah. So she 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 was in the limelight. She was, you know, achieving success, and I was like a little bump in that, like like a little not a bump, but a like a little like I said before, like a a little blip in her radar. This happened. To be to be frank, she she treated me pretty pretty poorly in some ways. I remember one incident where she had a friend coming in from uh, Toronto. Uh, he's a music producer, and prior to this, we jammed together maybe two or three times. And when I say jammed together, I'm just talking about me strumming some chords on her guitar while she played keyboard. So we hadn't, like, musically... <laughs> we hadn't been intimate musically. We'd been intimate every other way, but musically was off limits. And when this guy turned up uh, for a few days in town, she said to me, um, you know, he, he came up to the apartment and met her, and, and she said, oh, this is Ben on, and this and that. And then she pulled me aside and said, oh, you've you got to leave. Like, you can't be in the apartment while we make music. This is a, a guy I have a musical connection with, and this is this is me and him making music. So you need to leave, and she basically kicked me out. And at at that time, I felt really shitty about it. Years later, I could kind of understand it because I have been in that situation, like having a jam with someone or trying to record something where it doesn't work. Somehow, musically, there's no the switch is turned off and it doesn't it never turns on. So I got it later on, but at the time I was like, fucking hell, that's rough, man. Like, I would have even just gone in the other room and closed the door and played with the cat, Sapphire, until you'd finished your recording. I would, I'm not saying I wanted to be involved in the recording. I just wanted to be involved in whatever she did, basically. And she's, she's kicked me out. She also said, can you leave your mini disc recorder so we can record what we're doing? So I gave her my MD recorder to which I still have the original disc that she recorded onto. And yeah, they recorded a great song. Her name's Jenny, his name's Eric. They combined their forces and they became generic, which is pretty cool. And they recorded a song called What I Am. And that went on to be re-recorded onto her album as Cherry Bomb. She, they re-recorded that song, What I Am. But I have the source material of the original demo, if you like. Of which I had no part in, except that it was my mini disc recorder. <laughs> so I thought at the time that was treating me pretty poorly, but really, is it? It's some. It's something that she understood more than I understood. Like I don't. Un I never understood that musical connection at that time. So yeah. That was me. It's tough. Relationships working out are not working out are as much about timing as anything. Yeah. Yeah, timing. Yeah, definitely. I'd agree with that. Timing is important. Yeah. Either way, the timing with her meant a lot for me, but maybe not for her. I can get that. And I've lived, I, I've lived with it. And like when I when I saw her 16, uh, 16 years later, it wasn't like, like I never went into that meeting thinking, oh, this is it, dude. You got one more chance with her. No, 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 no. That's not what I went there for. I went there with, am I going to get some resolution here? Am I going to work out why this girl affected me as much as she did? Am I going to have some kind of, uh, uh, um, like, um, co uh, conclusion? Am I going to get some kind of mental conclusion to this? And if anything, it, it was more about... That was more a selfish meeting for me to be able to tell her all the things that I'd thought about telling her in the interim. Like, all the things that I'd... You know, because I'd been in relationships while we were still chatting and she'd been in relationships and she'd... Whatever, but I'd, I'd got to the point where I'm like... I'm probably never going to see her again, right? Like, what what... How would our paths ever connect again? I mean, who knows, but at that point, actually it was two times that we, I managed to, uh, CBJ for your sake, you, you don't know this, but my regulars, Hendrik does, but 
I was a photographer with a rock band and we toured Europe a whole bunch of times and we like we did Poland a bunch and the first time that we were in Poland I'd reached out to her and said I'm gonna be in Warsaw uh, for one night only <laughs> um, how's that it's a bit of a flip isn't it like now I'm the musician even though I'm only the photographer but I'm in your city yeah, I never thought of it like that it's like karma well, it's not karma but it's reversed yeah I'm in Poland I'd love to see you I'm only gonna be at the we're at the tour war for one night only and she and you know what she said man and I gotta gotta bless her for this she's like I'm heavily pregnant with my son I will try to come and see you I'm like fuck no go to the hospital or stay close to the hospital like she was I was like how close are you she's like it could be any day now I'm like do not do not do anything to see me do everything for your baby I'm nothing in comparison to you're about to have a baby do not do anything to come and see me just go and have your baby and so I never saw her that time but she she did say I'll do whatever I can to come and see you I'm like no forget that get she had she I don't think they're married but she's got a partner I'm like get get your guy get like get your perspective here like I'm I'm nothing for this go and have your baby so the next time we we're in Poland it was I guess it would have been maybe a year later so she'd had had a baby um, still on still on breast milk so it must have been pretty early because Hendrik you know where this story is going Hendrik you know this story this is pretty funny actually anyway so the next time I'm around I'm like oh we're, we're doing another tour and we're in Poland and uh, this time it wasn't tour war we were at some other venue in Warsaw I can't remember the name of it it was, it was ironically it was closer to her to her house and um yeah she's like yeah I got the little one would love to see you and so we caught up and it was so awesome uh, I'd love to hear that recording yeah okay I'll, I'll um when I get back to Australia I'll post it I'll post it although hang on I should ask her first right I should ask her I should definitely ask her before I post that song I'll ask her I'll ask her if I can post the original generic recording of what I am for you guys to hear because it's not available anywhere like no one yeah she never posted it anywhere I'll ask her I'll ask her I'm sure she'll be cool with it it's hard for us to com comment as we weren't involved but it could be the cause she was working that was her time for work professional space making music yeah I, 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 I saw that I understood that I still felt fuck cut up about it but I got it I got it and didn't want you there as a distraction in that moment yeah it's totally okay to not want a partner around when you do tip type trying to work especially create yeah yeah and like that's what I was kind of saying like at the time I was super super bitter about it but looking back on it years later I could definitely understand it uh, but if it was constant and not explained or discussed then maybe that being cold no no it was only a one-off it wasn't it wasn't yeah Hendrik yeah okay so the, the so that little breastfeeding side note so when I when I saw her again we're at a cafe somewhere in in, in Warsaw and um, little one starts crying she's got him there in the little bassinet or whatever and Gucci 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 and everything and then starts crying and she's she just oh it's just like oh it's feeding time hey he's really hungry oh, okay no worries just gets him out and um just like just undoes the top pulls out a breast pops the baby on baby starts going to town and um you know like like there's a couple of things at play at that point the first thing obviously for me is I mean I haven't seen her naked in 16 years the second thing is she's breastfeeding so it's not like if you you're not gonna like you have got to be a strange person to get off on that but the simple fact that it's happening in front of you 
is also a little bit shocking. Not that there's anything wrong with it, not that there's anything offensive about it, but the fact that it's happening right there, right then, and the last time you were there, it was a very different scenario. So this is playing off right in front of me, and I'm like, and I was thinking, how can I defuse this? The only way I thought was to make a joke. And she says, oh, I hope, hope this doesn't upset you or anything. And I said, like, offend me, upset me. No, to be honest, I'm a little jealous of him, to be honest. And that was my big gag. And I was like, I was just, I was waiting, like the second I delivered, I was thinking, fuck man, that could have gone, that could, this could go either way. She could be super upset with that or she could be funny. She could find it funny. And God bless, she laughed her head off. And we both knew that we were on the same page. Like, okay, there's a funny gag there, right? Yeah, and then, it, and then there was no problem, right? The kid has to feed and this is natural, so he's gonna do it. And like, it's not like, it's not illegal to breastfeed. It's not illegal to breastfeed in a, in a cafe. It's completely fine. Once that was out, I mean, the opposite could have been where we sat there in awkward silence. That would have been weird. But to make a joke of it and to sort of alleviate the um, awkwardness, that's how I... And I think that's how I've pretty much lived in most situations. Uh, try to find the, the, the gag, the joke. Make something light of the situation instead of making it heavier. Not that that was heavy, but it was definitely... is a, a situation I'd never found myself in before. A bit awkward is what I'm saying. Yeah. How's that sky? Oh, we got no skylight. Dude, that's 32. Dude, that's it. Sunset's over. Ah. Oh. I still got half a bourbon. Half a Cody. I guess we should wrap it up anyway. Oh, wow, folks. My last stream in New Zealand. We're almost going to wrap things up here. Does anybody have anything they want to add before I uh, end the stream here and say ta-ta to NZ? The next time I see you, it'll be like a week from now, I guess. Does anybody want to add anything? Anybody want to say any final words? Because, like, there's nothing to see here. It's just a dark night. I love that vlog. Yeah, I'm going to go home and watch it, to be honest, Hendrik. I'm going to go home and watch that one tonight. But of the matter at hand... New Zealand, I've loved my time here, hell yeah, NZ, let me just see if you guys want to add any final contributing messages and then we'll, I guess I'll wrap it up here. Nobody? Okay then. I've waited for the latency, the delay in the chat. I will say thank you for those that have been here on these streams. Appreciate you hanging out. CBJ, good stream, man. Stuck around way longer than I thought. Hey, there you go. The dark night descends from the mountains. Well, CBJ, I, my ambition with you as a viewer is that I can retain you. If I can, if I can get you to come back and hang out on an Australian stream in the next week or so, whatever it takes for me to get set up and do my thing, that'd be wonderful. There will be some IRL content from Australia. I'm gonna go out camping and hang out and driving streams and shit. I really appreciate the way you came in on this stream, told me that we, you'd see me shooting that. that and I'll post, I'll post that video as well on, um, how will I do it? I'll do it, on, I'll do it on Discord. Go down below into my Discord, join my Discord. I'll post it up there, a little, you see if, we'll see if you're in that, because you said you had a red and brown jacket. We'll see if you're in the vlog, in that video. Um, but yeah, it was really cool of you to stick around. I mean, yeah, you stuck around to the very end, dude. That's, that's really cool, man. Uh, post that remarks video to, yeah, to Insta. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do it to Insta. I'll do it to Insta. That's a good idea. I'll do it on my Instagram. I don't really use Instagram, but I'll do that for you, man. I'll do that for you. Yeah, cool, cool. I'll be keen to hear your reflections on time in Queenstown past six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll definitely do that. Um, and we'll probably do a stream where I talk a little about um, being blocked from the DLive Discord and also getting my strike. Because I'd like to sort of have a discussion about that as well. But I'm also a bit wary about sort of like 
I don't know, like, yeah. Anyway, we'll talk about it another time, but, but thank you again for being here. And Hendrik, thank you always for being here. For those that aren't here but are watching the replay, I appreciate you tuning in for whatever the time that you did tune in. For those that are watching not on DLive, I appreciate you being on the other platforms, wherever you've been watching. Uh, you should just come over to DLive so you can chat, because I'm only looking at the one chat here, it's on DLive. So if you're not on DLive, I just didn't see you. I apologize in advance. Doesn't have to be Insta, whatever. Yeah, I'll do it on Insta, I'll do it on Insta. Uh, so I'm going to uh, get out of the frame here and then close the stream down. I'll leave it for 20 seconds or so, so I can put up my end slate, but I'll get out of the stream here, out of the way skis, and you guys can uh, enjoy this vista of darkness. <laughs> There's nothing there to be seen, is there? How about this latency? What's gonna happen here with this latency? Um, where are we? I guess there'll be latency. And latency.